Fifteen years ago, both St. John's and Marist left the club football ranks to play varsity football. St. John's has dominated the series ever since, winning the first ten of the eleven meetings. But over the last three years, it's been the Red Foxes coming out on top. Well, hi again, everybody. I'm Barry Landers, along with Carl Rudder, on a rainy, damp night. A little chilly, Carl, but the Red Foxes have been a red-hot football club against St. John's the last three years. That's right, Barry. They have won the last three meetings against the Redmen of St. John's, basically because they've been able to rush the ball right down the throats of St. John's. And that's because they've been able to run behind number one, Don Diudo. Now, Diudo is the all-time Maris rushing leader with over 3,000 yards on the ground. He should have a good game again tonight against St. John's. He always goes up against his opposite number in Anthony Russo. It's come down to those two guys every time these two teams have met. Now, you have to remember that they're coming off a loss last week, Maris is to CW Post. And earlier tonight, I asked Coach Jim Parity about the short work week. Yeah, it was, a, it was a different week for us up there. Uh, we had some bad weather on Monday, and our field was real, real wet. And so we went indoors into a smaller facility. We got a lot done. Uh, we weren't expecting to hit much on Monday, but what we did is uh, we just went through our mental uh, aspects of the game and uh, took it from there. Does it hurt? Did you come out of last week's game banged up at all? And because of the short work week, uh, you don't have time to recover? Well, I don't think we really recovered until uh, yesterday. Actually, we started to feel real good physically yesterday. And then having a late game tonight, I think the bodies are 100% now. And, Barry, one thing you really have to like about Jim Parity, enthusiasm. Only 31 years old, already a head coach at a Division I AA school right here at Marist. Well, for Bob Ricker, this is his 16th year head here at St. John's. He's very enthusiastic, Marty Lyons, about his ball club, and he thinks his club needs to win this game. They're really fired up for this one. Well, Barry, his seniors are really, in, uh, really fired up tonight, especially number 21, Anthony Russo. Last year, he was held to 52 yards rushing. He wants to redeem himself, but to open up those holes in the middle, they have to get number 25, Anthony Iadivio, involved in the game. Last year, he led the team in reception. This year, only five catches, and he hasn't been into the end zone. The defense, they have, they're going to have to plug some holes. Against this strong running attack of Maris, last year they gained over 400 yards. Tonight, it's not going to be a battle of two great running backs. It's going to be a battle of the men in the trenches. So get set for ground warfare as St. John's and Maris collide right here on Sports Channel. We'll be right back. St. John's football is brought to you by AC Delco Automotive Park. As we mentioned earlier, the Redmen won 10 in a row at one point. Maris has won the last three, including last year, when Diudo and Corolla combined for 335 yards in that impressive victory. The last time they played here on this field, Maris won also 21-18. They had 469 yards total offense in that game. As we get set to play, Marty Lyons, uh, anything early that we should be keying on? Well, I think that we have to look at the men up front in the trenches because both have great running backs, but they're going to have to find the holes and the opportunity to run. Marty, what about the weather factor? It's a cool, damp night. Uh, the field's in pretty good shape. The AstroTurf here, think it'll have any kind of an effect? Well, any time the AstroTurf gets wet, it's going to get slippery, so you're going to have to watch the footing out there. St. John's notoriously a slow starting club. They've scored only six points in the first quarter. They won the toss and will receive, and Dettorio will be kicking off for the Red Foxes of Marist University. Marist, of course, located in Poughkeepsie, just up the Hudson. And they've been playing varsity football the last 15 years, and they've really come on the last couple of years. Back deep to receive the kick uh, for the St. John's Redmond. Uh, Tom McPherson, their speedy wide receiver, number 87, and Anthony Iadivio, another wide receiver who has to have a big game tonight. McPherson will take it at the 10-yard line. Fakes the reverse, carries to the near side, cuts back across the 25, across the 30, and down at the 31-yard line by John Kelly. Let's take a look at the St. John's starting lineup, and of course Anthony Russo is the guy to keep an eye on. Art Costello, the fullback. McPherson had a big game last week. He's a guy in the passing game to watch. That offensive line has struggled a bit, uh, but Campolet and Locasio are two good ones. And, of course, the quarterback, the guy that we'll be highlighting tonight, Sean Sharkey, has been a bit erratic so far. And the one thing they're looking for is him to be very consistent tonight. Don't make any mistakes. Don't force the ball in. Only a 37% completion percentage so far. Split backfield. 
Sharkey to throw on first down. Throws the quick out pass to Ayadivio. About a two or three yard gain before he goes out of bounds. Setting up a second down play. Taking a look at the defense uh, for this uh, Marist club. That's the strong point of this club. That front uh, group is very strong. A front five, an odd man defense. The linebackers uh, are Hancock and Saginario. The secondary is a pretty good one. Harris uh, and Woodard are the outstanding defensive backs back there. Well, we talked about it earlier. If the Redmen are going to get something going with Russo, they got to get Ayadivio involved. They come out throwing it. Sharkey delivers a perfect out pattern. Now it's second and seven. They feel they can throw up the middle against this team. They're not sure if they're going to be able to run a whole lot because of the strength of this five-man defense. Sharkey, little play action, rolling left, dumping a little screen intended for Russo, incomplete, setting up a third down play. There is Sharkey down on the seat of his pants. And Bob Ricca looking to win one against Maris. He's lost the last three, Marty. Well, Ricca, he's excited about this team. He said earlier in the season his seniors have never lost. They've always won the division. They've always won a conference. And that's what he's looking for right now. They're in the first place of the new MAC conference. All right, they go with three wide receivers right now. Split backfield. Russo last week caught a 67-yard touchdown pass. He's uh, now blocking. Sharkey with plenty of time. Throwing up the middle. Intended for Ayadivio. Overthrew. As defending on the play was uh, Harris, number six. But Sharkey overthrew by a couple of yards that time. And we talked about the strong runner. And here comes Sharkey in the first possession for the Redmen. Three plays, three passes. And right there, the ball just gets up in this damp weather and floats. And then look at the putter, Joe Parker. He'll be doing the putting, standing back at around the 20-yard line. Harris is deep. Also back is Malik Woodard, the outstanding freshman from at uh, Burlington City, New Jersey. Number nine. Parker steps forward. Not particularly a good kick, but on the AstroTurf, they'll let it roll. And it will roll inside the 35 and be blown dead at around the 30-yard line. So Joe Parker gets no return, a 36-yard kick. And the Red Foxes take over first and ten. Take a look at the Maris uh, starting lineup. Well, Diudo and Carrero. What a combination. A one-two punch that Bob Ricca says we haven't faced ever before in the last four years. And uh, the receiver to watch is Danny Phelan, the split end. He has seven catches. They don't throw very much, but he's the guy that they'll throw to. The offensive line is big, led by Andrew Young, number 77. The pros taking a look at that guy. And right. The Buffalo Bills came down to look at him. He's got great size, great feet, and great ability. So first and ten. They'll work out of the I formation. Diudo is the tailback. They send Phelan in motion. The fake to the fullback, and here's the pitch to Diudo. Turns outside, and they stop at the 30-yard line. Fine coverage that time by Chris Carew, the strong side linebacker, coming up and making the hit after about a half-yard gain. What about Brian McCourt, the quarterback, Marty? Well, he's got a strong arm. He's got great mobility, and watch him to do a lot of rolling out, and he runs the option to perfection. Well, he's a guy who makes decisions well, a guy that doesn't throw much. They'll run the ball 65% of the time and uh, only throw about 35. Again, working out of the eye. Carrero is the fullback. He led them in rushing last year. They go to Diudo behind Carrero, right up the middle to around the 33-yard line, and he was stopped on the play after a short gain by Michael Cotter. Taking a look at that St. John's defense, they changed from a 3-4 this year to a 4-3, and Steve Dombrowski, uh, Ray Lambright, Al Bruno, some good inside people. The linebackers led by Walter DeForest and Chris Carew, their number one and number two tacklers, and the secondary playing three freshmen, Marty, including Ken Forte. Last week, two big interceptions. Well, the one thing Bob Brick is doing, he's throwing them in the, into the fire, but they're having the playing time so that they can learn. Third and seven. Let's see if McCourt goes to the air here. The lefty to throw. Has time. Dumping it over the middle. Complete. Carrero going down the sideline. He may go. Carrero at the 20. And tackled inside the five and around the three-yard line. Brought down after nearly going all the way by Kurt Ditzler, number 42. And Carrera just ran a simple pattern over the middle. He was wide open, ran for 66 yards. But give McCourt an X. Watch protection. All starts up front. McCourt goes back. He delivers. Carro gets it. Watch him break to the outside. He uses the sidelines. And now he's going. If Dessler doesn't catch him at the one, it's a touchdown. Marty, 
this guy, 5'11", 220, has excellent speed. Had 152 yards against St. John's last year. They go to their hand-bone offense right here. Power backfield. McDonald in the game, number 33. He has scored three touchdowns. They go to McDonald. He slices to the right side, and he scores. So Matt McDonald, the junior, who's carried only 12 times, gets his fourth touchdown of the year. And they use him in short yardage and goal line situation for one purpose. To pick up that yard, pick up the two yards, and right there he picked up six points. Well, Matt McDonald punching it over. Short yardage expert. Business administration major from Fairfield, Connecticut. Chris DeTorio to try the extra point. And Maris, which jumped in front of post last week, gets off to the early start here. The holder right now is Peter Ford. The kick up and the kick is good. Shades of St. Peter's. When St. Peter's here in our opening telecast of the year went right down the field and scored in the very first possession. Bob Ricca wasn't a happy camper then. He's not happy now. Well, the difference is Maris came out and they stuck with their game plan. They, they went to the run. They isolated the running attack. Then they had the dump off for 66 yards. You look at the Redmen. They came out. They take Russo completely out of the game, and they're 3-for-3 three three passing the ball. Well, Carrero has excellent speed, 4-5-7 speed, but here's McDonald scoring. Well, watch McDonald. He takes it outside, right there off the tackle, off Young, and gets in for the score. Got a nice block from freshman number 35, Ben Green, who they bring in in that handball, and they take Diuto out and go with three big backs. Well, when you have Green picking up your outside linebacker, right here he'll cut him down all McDonald has to do is walk into the end zone so the Marist Red Foxes score early and jump in front by a score of seven to nothing and there's a look at second year coach very youthful guy and as Carl said a very enthusiastic guy and the Red Foxes Jim Parry in his second season he was a quarterback at the University of Maine, a 1984 graduate. He could smile and be happy. Couldn't find the headset. Well, he's a little uh, excited. Red Foxes, as we've said, have had St. John's number over the last uh, three years. He was an offensive coordinator two years ago, then took over. He's been an assistant at Northeastern, Brown, Syracuse. So he's had some very good experience, Marty, Jim Parity, before taking over as a head coach. Well, they said his enthusiasm, it rubs off on their player. He's a very emotional player. I mean, coach, and it rubs right off. Dittorio booming this one to Iadivio at the four-yard line to the 15-20. It's got a little room here to the 25-30 and is down at around the 31-32 yard line as he was brought down on the play by Julian Wise and also on the play Eddie Duganis, number two. And right there, Ayadivio is one block away from taking it the length of the field for a touchdown. Well, that scoring drive, four plays, 71 yards under two minutes. That's not usually the way Maris scores. They usually grind it out. But, of course, the big 66-yard pass setting up the McDonald's short one-yard run. Let's see what the Redmen do. Countering here, trailing 7 nothing. Again, working out of the I formation. Remember, they threw on every down their first series. Costello and Russo, the running back, split. They'll go to Russo behind Costello, dances outside, gets across the 35 to around the 36, pick up a four. John Sanginario, the linebacker, the freshman, one of two youngsters playing in that uh, linebacking crew, made the stop, number 32. And Bob Rickett said he wants to exploit these young linebackers. He wants to get the middle wide open so Anthony Russo can run the ball, have some running room right there. He picks up five yards. They've got to go with their game plan and get Russo involved in the game. Well, you mentioned Russo being stopped last year. 52 yards and 20 carries. Five-yard pickup on that last run. They stay on the ground to Russo. Russo looking for the first down. Won't get it. Stopped about a yard shy as he was brought down on the play by Jeff Sacomano. And uh, that's the nose guard in that five-man front. And they said, we haven't faced an odd front. It's going to be a key how Locasio, our center, works against uh, their nose guard. Well, when you have a guy 6'2", 264, second man Watch him right here in the middle. He jams up the hole. Nowhere for Russo to go. Now it's a third and one situation. Third and one for the Redmen of St. John's. Russo has carried twice for nine yards. Let's see if they go to him. On the keeper. And picking up the first down is Sean Sharkey. Sharkey's a pretty good runner, Marty. We've seen him bail his team out of some situations with some good running. Got good size, and that time, 6-2-2-0-8 just took it right up for the uh, first down. Well, the one thing Bob Ricker wants to see Sharkey do tonight, if there's no wide open receivers, don't make a mistake. Don't try to force the ball in there. Try to pick up some positive yards. Run the ball. Well, last year, Sharkey had an excellent percentage of 54%, but he threw for 18 touchdowns. This year, 
only 37%, only 29 completions in the first three games. First and 10 for the Redmen. Here's uh, Russo, tries the left side of the line and gets about two or three to maybe the 46-yard line before he's brought down on the play by John Saginario again. Well, Saginario is everywhere. He's right there. He's playing that middle linebacker position, and he's going to swing from tackle to tackle. He's an interesting story. A freshman from Newton, Pennsylvania. He won the job. They had wide open competition there. Better against the run than the pass. And he's learned the defense quickly, and that's a tough spot, Marty, for a middle linebacker as we look at Russo lining up. He's durable. He loves to carry the ball 30 or 40 times. Now, Art Costello out of the lineup, replaced by Charlie Broadway in the backfield. Broadway as a wide receiver, single setback on second and seven. And let's see, time elapsed. There was some movement also. We may get a delay of game penalty here. Well, right there, Sharkey's back there. He's getting ready to call the play. He sees blitz. He realizes it, but he can't audible. Right there, they just run out of time. It's going to be a delay of game. Let's hear Richard DeSimone, the referee. Delay game. Offense. So. so that is the call. Delay of game. And his fine crew are working tonight, the uh, ECAC crew, on this Thursday night uh, doing a fine job. We'll let you know who they are a little bit later on. Right now, St. John's makes changes as uh, they send in a couple of wide receivers in a second and 12 situation. McPherson and Iadivio will line up wide to the right. And Tommy Jadis in the ball game right now is a wide receiver as well. Three wide receivers. Russo, not much there. Maybe he got back to the line of scrimmage. That hole shut down very quickly, Marty, as it was Joe Jarjura, the defensive end, and Jeff Sakamoto, the nose guard again, combining on the stop, numbers 54 and uh, 75. We talked how strong this defense is. They're fourth in the nation now. They've, they're only giving up 53 yards total rushing to any team that they play. This is a very strong team. Watch the defense. This is what you call a swarm defense. They're not just making one guy make the tackle, but watch them all come in. There's four red helmets around there. On right, a big third down play. Sharkey rolling right. He's in trouble getting away from Duganis. Throws for the near sideline. Iadivio could not hang on. Not enough for a first down anyway, but he was getting pressure on the blitz from Eddie Duganis, number two, coming from that strong safety. Well, Duganis comes off the corner. He's untouched, but give, let's give some credit to Sharkey right there. He avoids the sack. He gets it out of bounds, puts the same in a punt situation. So it'll be Joe Parker punting for the second time. Malik Woodard back to receive the kick. Number nine, also back there will be number six, Bruce Harris, as we look at our, from our end zone camera. And Joe Parker, 36-yard kick his first time. Has plenty of time to get this one off. And Harris will field this at the 19-yard line. Flag on the play as he spins to the 28 or 29-yard line. And we'll wait for the officials to tell us about the penalty. 37-yard kick and a 9-yard return. Dan Parker on the tackle, the tight end. And remember, it was Dan Parker who scored the big touchdown against St. Peter's. They haven't used him much this year, only two receptions. Here's referee D. Simone. We had an illegal block in the back on the offense on a return. First down. So they'll move the ball back 10 yards on the illegal block. Timeout of the field, 8.33 to go. The Red Foxes lead the Redmen 7 0. Still the greatest. University, where the Marist Red Foxes uh, are leading it by a score of 7 to nothing midway through this first quarter. Brian McCourt, number four, brings his club to the line of scrimmage. First and 10 at the 19-yard line. And working out of the eye formation. And this time they go to Carrero. He's got the speed to turn it outside. Chase to the sideline. And he goes out of bounds. Ken Forte chasing him out of bounds along with Mark Bernardini. And when you have a running back that can run inside like Carrero 
Kent, and you have one that can run outside. You have like Mr. Inside and Mr. Outside, and that's what's going to keep this defense of the Redmen off guard tonight. Well, he's a fine runner out of Monroe, Connecticut, an average of over five yards every time he's carried the ball in his career. Very durable runner. He led them in rushing last year when Diudo was banged up the first couple of games. It's a tough tandem, Marty, to, to key on two backs that can run as well as these two, as these two can. First and ten for the 30. On the delay, Diudo crosses the 30, maybe a yard. St. John stopping the play. Chris Carew, who's the number two tackler, coming up quickly. And Carew did an excellent job closing the hole. But we got to look for Diudo taking the ball outside. He's not the inside force. Al Bruno also on that stop. Bruno moved this week, Marty, from defensive tackle to defensive end. Uh, they felt they needed a, a guy that could contain better. Jeremy Walsh started the season at that spot, but they've got Bruno out there now. And Bruno's also leading that defensive line with a total of 19 tackles. So, so it'll be second down and nine. One-yard pickup for Diudo. So far, Carrero has heard him more. Good play action, fake rolling. He's in trouble being chased on the far side. Got a block. Will throw on the run and throws. It's going to be intercepted downfield by Kirk Ditzler, number 42. And Ditzler did an excellent job just hanging back. Even though McCourt was outside the pocket, the mobility to throw on the run, and Ditzler just comes up with a great play. Tough pass for a lefty to complete. Marty running to his right, having to set and throw back. Good pressure by Bruno, 67 here. Well, McCourt gets out of the pocket right here, and he's, gonna, he's a left-handed throw. He throws across his body, and Ditzler just playing out there in center field comes up with an excellent reception for an interception. It's the second interception for Kurt Ditzler this year. Remember against St. Peter's, he had a big one to set up the game-winning touchdown. Let's see if St. John's can take advantage of the turnover. First and ten for the Redmen. Sharkey on the draw to Russo. Russo will get a couple of tough yards, but look at that gang piling there. And uh, that Maris, the middle of the line, very tough. Saginaro and Sacramento on the tackle. Well, let's take another look at the interception here. Right here, you see McCord. He's out of the pocket right now. He can't set his feet. He's throwing on the run, and he just overthrows his receiver. Distler back there. He goes down, cups it, makes a great interception. Gives the red man a little bit of field position right now. Russo, five carries, 17 yards. Second and nine for the Redmen, trailing 7-0, seven, seven minutes to go, first quarter. There's a look at Brian McCord after that interception. Sharkey, a quick out to the sideline, and it's complete. McPherson, and he has the first down inside the 45, brought down by Tim Crack. You know, McPherson had a big ball game against them last year, Marty. Uh, I think he caught something like six passes, or nine passes last year for 123 yards and two touchdowns. And if you're going to get some openings up front to, for Rissa to run it, you're going to have to utilize the speed of the receivers. Right now, Tommy Jadis has replaced Anthony Iadivio, bringing in a play from the sideline for the Redmen. First and ten at the 43. Pro set in the backfield. Sharkey handing off to Russo. Tries the right side of this line. Crosses the 40 to around the 39-yard line behind Dan Ryan and Mark Winkler. And Joe McGann. Haven't mentioned the big captain, but they love this guy in the defensive line. Big number 76. And McGann is 6'2", 241. A senior. Great leadership and a very emotional player out there. So that's going to reflect on the other 10 people in the huddle. And as Marty pointed out, this is a defense which was among the nation's uh, leaders in rushing defense and overall defense. They don't give up a lot of yardage nor a lot of points. Second and seven for St. John's. Sharkey drops straight back to throw with time. Throwing off the middle. It's almost deflected and almost picked off. And looked like uh, number two, Eddie Duganis has picked it off on the deflection. Well, Duganis is back there. He caught the reflection. But Sharkey had a wide open receiver. Ayadivia was wide open. He's got to deliver the ball. And the receiver has got to look the ball in and make that reception. There was a flag on the play. David Caldwell, number 46, I think got a piece of this. Let's watch. Well, watch Sharkey right here. He delivers the ball. Just uh, the defender comes in, bounces it back to the teammate. It's an interception, but there's a flag on the play. Well, apparently the penalty uh, 
will be a holding uh, penalty. They've moved the ball back to the 30, make that the 28-yard line. David Caldwell deflecting that, and he is quite a football player, the senior from Rome, New York. And right now it'll be first and 10 for the Marist Red Foxes. Carrero tries to spin to the outside. Short pickup of anything on the play as he is brought down by outside linebacker John Anitra, who's one of the new starters on this St. John's defense. Well, the one th thing you want to see is when Carrero runs the ball, he's the bullish type of runner. You don't want to see him dancing east and west. You want to see him taking the ball north and south. Right there, he has a no-gainer. He's running east and west. Hit that line. He's a guy that can bounce off people, Marty. He's built low to the ground at about 5'10", 220. And can lower his shoulder. Didn't pick up anything on that play. Second and 10. Again, out of the eye. McCourt handing off Dayuto. Flag on the play as he crosses the 30 to around the 32-yard line. Could be a holding penalty. Chris Carew on the tackle. The senior from Franklin Square. It will be a holding penalty. The preliminary indication by Rich D. Simone. Marist has been hurt by penalties at times this year. Last week's game, uh, they moved the ball effectively, but uh, self-destructed because of some penalties. Got a hole on the offense. So that will cost him 10, making it a uh, second down and 20. And as a head coach, you hate to see a penalty like that. You're running back, they pick up seven yards, you have a holding. Now instead of second and three or third and three, you're in a second and 20 situation. Well, Brian McCourt last week you had to throw the ball quite a bit against Post. He was 13 for 32, 173 yards and a touchdown. Normally they throw the ball about 20 times a game. And Carrero trying to move the pile, gets maybe to the 20-yard line. Looked like he might have fumbled, pushed back Al Bruno on the tackle, along with Ray Lambright. Haven't mentioned Lambright's name, Marty. He's been slowly coming back to the form that he had a couple of years ago when he was one of the best linemen around in the metropolitan area. Boy, he's coming off that broken ankle from last year. You know, he's a little hesitant physically, and mentally you have to get yourself back in the game. Edgar Hayes, number 20, is checked in as a nickelback for the Redmen, replacing linebacker Chris Carew. There's a look at Ray Lambright. He was Liberty Conference All-Star in his first two years, and Saturday out all of last year with that broken ankle. Let's go, D! Come on, John and Eitra. Second and let's call it 17. In trouble. The court will throw to the near yeah. sideline. Trying to make the interception over there with Steve Diamikas, and he comes up with a football. But let's give credit. We talked about Lambright right there. 79. He puts the pressure on. That interception wouldn't have happened if Lambright didn't whip this guy up front, make something happen, comes up with the big interception. But 79 coming into your picture. He's the one that forces McCourt outside, throw off balance, and here comes the interception. Steve Diabikas coming up with the interception. Boy, they love this kid from East Iceland. He's a place kicker. He had a dandy game against St. Peter's in the opener. And again, the Redmen given good field position on the turnover. First and ten. This time at the 23-yard line. Russo trying to dance, cuts back, trying to reverse his field, but nowhere to go. Marty, they're getting great penetration that defensive line as McCourt unhappy after throwing a poor pass his second interception. Well, McCourt's got to be very unhappy. That's two possessions, two interceptions. Well, they just love that kid, the Amicus. Everybody uh, from, uh, uh, that we talked to here at St. John's think he's going to be great. And the Amicus just showed excellent speed right there. He had a dive for the ball, showed great hands, gave his offense great field position. Now it's time for Sharkey to do something with this field position. Second and ten from the 23-yard line. He's in trouble, Sharkey, and will be pulled down. Number 54 coming up with the play, Joe Jarjura, the 5'10 sophomore, as he was flying in, looked like he was untouched. And Jarjura just came wide open, right over the center, big sack, takes him out of field position. To, and now he has to pick up some positive yards to get the field goal team out. Eight-yard loss right Watch here. Watch number 54 to Jaro. He doesn't go for the fake, goes in there and slams Sharkey for a big sack. Now well, that's the 10th sack for this Marist defense. And boy, their defenses look tough so far tonight. And all 10 sacks have come from the defensive lineman. 
they've had no help from the linebackers. Third and 18, McPherson has single coverage, top of your screen. Sharkey looking that way, will dump it off. No help there, the closest man to the ball was the offensive lineman, Mark Winkler, number 64, as they look for a screen on that play, but Sharkey had no time to get that pass off. Well, for uh, a screen to be very successful, you have to do the proper fakes. You just can't let the defensive lineman come in on Sharkey and expect for the screen to work. Right there, the middle screen, the offensive lineman did not slow up the defensive lineman to make them think that a screen was actually going to take place. Well, the offense, which has been disappointing so far in the early going, not doing the job so far tonight. Parker to punt once again. He'll try to angle this kick and keep the ball inside the 10. He'll kick from around the 40. Gets a rush. Sails it to the far side. Let's see where it'll go as it gets inside the five. Roll St. John's will cover it at about the one or two yard line. Hustling play by the Redmen to get down there. Number 81 was Dan Parker, the tight end, first man to the ball. And St. John's has pinned McCourt inside the five. Well, McCourt's got to be a little disappointed, but he's got to feel good about his defense. And Bob Rick has got to be scratching his head. His defense just created two turnovers, and they couldn't do anything with it. Well, Marty, we talked about Diuno and Ruth. So over the years having quite a rivalry, they're two outstanding running backs. And as we look at the numbers, you'll see that over the course of the th first three years, Diuto with an average of 5.3 yards every time he's carried the ball against St. John's, Russo 3.4. That's almost two yards a game difference. Well, the big thing is which team wins. I don't think they're going for individual records. And on the keeper, McCourt will just edge it out to maybe the two-yard line. Steve Dombrowski and Al Bruno combining on the stop. There's a look at Jim Parity. He's also the offensive coordinator. Did that job, as we mentioned, in his coaching stints as an assistant at Northeastern and elsewhere at Syracuse. He was a, also an offensive coach. And what a position to be in to be the head coach at 31 years old. A lot of time to grow with the program and a lot of people to break into a great program they have up there at Marist. Casio 88 in motion. And they'll go to the big fullback and Carrero will bang it out to the five-yard line before he's brought down by Al Bruno and uh, setting up a third down play. Well, the one thing they don't want to do is they don't want to make a mistake. They don't want to have a turnover. Right here, McCourt is just trying to get some working room back there. Now it's a third and five, almost a passing situation. Now McCourt has uh, thrown two interceptions in third down situations earlier. Let's see if he'll try to put it up here. Again, they work out of the eye. You can see the backs lined up in the end zone. McCourt to Diuto, and Diuto won't get anywhere, maybe to the six-yard line. Very conservative, John Anitra, the sophomore from Bayshore, and Walter DeForest, the middle linebacker, combining on the stop, setting up a punting situation for the big guy, number five, A.J. Grant, 6'5", 260-pound freshman, and he'll be kicking from his end zone. Mark. Well, the one thing you have to do, if you're going to run up the middle on uh, the Redman, you're going to have to block number 47, DeForest. He's in there every time. He's only 6'1", 207, but he He'll be around the ball all night. O'Leary is the deep safety back at the 45-yard line. Grant averaging about 35 yards a kick. Booms this one high to the 50-yard line. O'Leary, the freshman, to the 40. Has some blocking. And will be down at around the 32-yard line. An 18-yard return on the 42-yard punt. Let's go down to the field, and here's Carl Roy. All right, Barry, you've heard the expression, too many cooks in the kitchen. That's apparently what it seems like right now for St. John's. The offensive coaches seem a little bit confused, and the players seem even more confused. Offensive line coach Fred Bruno talking with offensive coordinator Bob Moltisanti. They talk things over, and they look at one another, and they, they look confused, and the kids are looking back at them. Now, the kids walk off the field, and they're talking about the mistakes. Then they go to the coaches, and the coaches say, is that what we're supposed to do? Just a lot of confusion offensively in the huddle with the St. John's offense. Well, Sean Sharkey crawled two for seven. Let's see if he can do better than that right here. 29 seconds to go in the quarter. He'll put it in the air looking for the sideline. Charlie Broadway was the check that Iadivio was the intended receiver down at the 15-yard line. They tried the fade pattern, but again, Sharkey not on target over through the receiver. And a lot of that confusion could be that this is the first time all year that they're facing a 5-2 defense. They, first time all year that they're facing with somebody on the nose all the time. Now the Redmen make a change. John O'Leary, the speedy freshman from South Six, New Jersey has come in as a receiver, number 84. He'll go to the top of your screen. Line up against Bruce Harris, single coverage. 
Russo directly behind Sharkey. On second down, they go to Russo. And again, no hole as he ran right into Jeremy Thode, number 39, the leading sack man on this team with five sacks. He stayed home as defensive end right there. Well, Thode right there just did an excellent job shedding the uh, running black back to blocker. And Russo has nowhere to uh, run. If you're not going to get Thode off his feet, Russo cannot pick up positive yards. Impressive first quarter for the Marist Red Foxes. Time out of the field. We head to the second quarter, and Marist leads St. John's 7 to nothing. Now they face a third and nine as we begin the second quarter, trailing seven to nothing. Single setback. Sharkey has struggled in the early going. Throwing a quick pass low for McPherson, just a little too low. He dove, trying to make the catch at the 15-yard line, but it goes incomplete. And Sharkey's going to have to go to the sidelines. He's going to have to regroup. Right now, he's just putting too much pressure on himself. He's got to take three steps, set his feet, wait for his receiver to make that break, and then deliver the ball. Well, they are going to go for it on fourth and nine at the 30-yard line. And this time, Ayadivio will go wide to the right. Also wide to the right will be Charlie Broadway. Russo, the single setback on fourth and nine. Sharkey looking for the sideline. Fine catch by McPherson. A penalty on the play as he was being tackled on the play after he picked up the first down. Tim Crack, number 31, defending on the play. And there was a flag thrown right there. And Sharkey also took a pop after delivering that. By number 46, Dave Caldwell. He came untouched right off the corner. Hit Sharkey. Sharkey had the awareness to find his receiver. Now we'll wait and see what the flag was on. Pass interference. That will give St. John's the automatic first down anyway. They picked up enough yardage. Let's see what the other penalty will be as uh, referee Richard D. Simone talks it over. Pass interference. Defense. First down. Watch Crack come right over there. There's number 46 Caldwell, but watch Crack. He just comes up, hits the receiver a little bit too soon. So St. John's with a big fourth down conversion has a first and ten at the 15-yard line, trailing in the ball game seven to nothing. Ayadivio on Broadway will line up wide to the right. McPherson, single coverage at the bottom view screen. You'll see now from our end zone camera movement in the line here as they look on a three-man front here. Hand off to the left side, Russo to the 10. As he went behind the left uh, tackler, Anthony Ferraro on the left guard, Steve Campley. And he was brought down on the play by John Sacolano, or rather John Saginero, number 32, that middle linebacker. And we talked about the speed of Russo right there. He just shows excellent quickness to hit that hole. Picks up the five yards. Now it's second to five. Sharkey has plenty of room to work. He ought to be patient and get his team into the end zone. Get him on the scoreboard in this drive. Robert Toronto has checked into the ball game as a fullback. He's a good blocker, second and five right here. Russo has gained 35 yards on nine carries. Chucky looking for the end zone. McPherson trying for that one. Working against Tim Crack, it'll set up a third down play. Well, Sharkey had McPherson wide open right there. Just go back, take your time. I think he's putting a little bit too much pressure on himself right now. He's got to relax. They're only down by seven. Take control of this offense. Sharkey 3 for 11 for 26 yards and one interception. Now a third and six from about the 11 yard line. Looking for McPherson and he's got the touchdown as they try it again and beat Tim Crack and McPherson who's been their big money guy, number two receiver last year, had 14 touchdowns, comes up with a touchdown pass, that's his fourth TD of this year. Well let's give credit right there to number 18, Sharkey, we talked about him being patient, it's almost the same play, McPherson takes the defender, pushes him into the end zone and then Sharkey sets his feet, delivers it, gets him on the scoreboard with a, a touchdown that they needed. So Sean Sharkey throws his sixth touchdown pass of the year. He had three last 
week. Two to McPherson and an easy win over Siena. Diamikas to try the extra point. Low snap. The ball is down on the field. They'll try to run it. The ball fumbled. And as it goes uh, to the near sideline, uh, the ball blown dead. And that will do it. So the snap could not be held that time uh, by the holder. And that really hurt St. John's right there as they trail now by a score of 7-6. to six. And you hate to see that after your offense. They were very productive that drive. Drove it 80 yards down the field. Gets a score. You need that extra point. Anthony Iadini was the holder. He could not hang on to that snap from the center. And there's a look at Sean Sharkey coming up with the big touchdown pass to get the Redmen on the board. Now let's watch the difference in Sharkey right here. He takes the ball. He'll take a five-step drop, go back, set his feet, delivers the ball. There's McPherson. He pushes the defender all the way. Make sure you cross that end zone line and then score the touchdowns. Watch Sharkey again. He's going back. He's reading the defense. Sets himself. That's the big key. And then he gets a big hit by uh, Joe McGann. A little love tap. Marty, you used to like to do that to a quarterback at times, right? Well, right here as we see McPherson, he's telling I go outside, you read me. That's the relationship that you have to have between a quarterback and receiver. The receiver comes back. Tell the quarterback what you're capable of doing, how you can be the defender, and then let the quarterback get you the ball. Well, that communication it's so important. Julian Wise and Don Dayuto back to receive the kick. John Ledwith to kick off for the Redmen, who trails 7-6. to six. The Amicus has missed some extra points this year. That wasn't his fault, obviously. But uh, St. John's now 2-5, for five, the Amicus, in the extra point department. Ledwith's line drive kick will sail off the hands of uh, number 22, Julian Wise, and he will have to down it. And it'll be first and 10 at the 20-yard line. So good kick by Ledwith. And that was a wise move by Wise. He was five <laughs> yards deep. There's no sense trying to bring that ball out. And especially since you're running backwards and you have to go the opposite direction. Here's a look at Brian McCourt, who has had one completion. That's 66 yarded to set up the short touchdown run. One for three for 66 yards and two interceptions. We've got a flag on that kickoff, and looks like they're going to bring it back, Marty. There's Jim Parity. Redmond may have been offside. Well, anytime you see him lining up for a re-kick, it's got to be offsides on the offense. And a mental mistake. Jim Parity says we'll take the kick. He's got Julian Wise, a speedster. Wise has returned uh, eight kicks, averaging Offside. almost 23. On the team. We'll kick it again. And there's the comments of Richard D. Simone. Uh, I hope you enjoy the microphone that we have with the officials for each game. Don't forget Marty and I and Carl will be with you Saturday afternoon from uh, Hofstra University as the Hofstra Flying Dutchman look to break a three game losing streak taking on the University of Buffalo and Cliff Scott should be a good one Marty. And Buffalo's looking to break a four game losing streak so uh, a lot of excitement <laughs> for Saturday. Alright here we go. Wise to take it at the five yard line. He's got a wedge to the 20 to the 25 flag on the play as he gets almost to the 30 maybe to the 29-yard line, brought down uh, after picking up some nice yardage by Nick Caracciolo, the linebacker, number 63. And number 65, Jeremy Walsh, comes down there and just blasts the wedge apart, number 65. Walsh, a very aggressive player. Remember, Al Bruno has taken over his starting spot, a transfer from West Point. Again, the officials talking it over. We've got a great crew. Nicholas Kukaris is the umpire. Head linesman is Robert Schuster, line judge Al Hilaria, back judge Neil Ortner, and the field judge Frank Spano, and of course the clock operator. Can't forget the clock operator, Al Jacklin. Well, we need the clock operator. <laughs> Marty, I asked you earlier before about giving a love tap to the quarterback. Uh, you as a defensive lineman, the guy throws a TD, and after we hear the call from De Simone, we'll get you a call. We have interlocked interference on a return. <laughs> they should have kept the first kick. They would have had the ball. Well, they'll get it at the 19-yard line here, so it's about a wash, I guess. And as a defensive lineman, anytime you work that hard, if you can get back and make sure that you get a good, clean hit, not a cheap shot on the quarterback, let them know that you're back there. It makes that quarterback aware, hey, maybe number 93 is going to be around me all day. Ryan McCourt on the pitch. Diuto 
Carrera with a block flag on the play. Diota trying to turn it outside. He's got four, six, five speed. Run out of bounds after a short pickup, but there is a, another flag on the play, and it's become a handkerchief field day here, Marty. And Diamikis right there just makes an excellent force on the corner here. We'll wait on the call. If another holding penalty. Maris really shooting themselves in the foot. Bob Ricca doesn't mind. It's nice to see somebody else doing that for a change. And Dayutoto had to take the ball all the way to the sidelines because Demikas came up there and forced him out. That's what you want your strong safety to do. On the offense, no first down. Well, McPherson on the receiving end of the 12-yard Sharky pass. That seven play, 32-yard drive, a minute and 25 seconds for the Redmen. And uh, the extra point, of course, no good. Uh, right now they're pinned inside the 10. Let's call it at the 8-yard line. They have to go to the 28-yard line. So it's first and 20. As they send a wide receiver, Greg Cassio, at the bottom of your screen, wide to the left. Or rather, Gary Cassio. Again out of the eye. Carrero is the fullback. And Dayuto the tailback. Guerrero trying to blast his way up the middle. Gang tackling by the Redmen. And they're really shutting down the middle. Again, that middle linebacker, Walter DeForest, the junior from Florida who transferred from Nassau Community right in the middle of things along with Al Bruno, 67. But you got to like the way they're shutting down the middle. Something that last year, uh, they just ran right up the gut against him. Well, DeForest right there, he's showing the strength. He's going sidelines to sideline. What he's doing is he's keying on the fullback and he's plugging up some holes. That's what you want your middle linebacker to do. Guerrero, five carries for 20 yards. Dayuto, four for just seven. Here's the pitch to Dayuto behind Carrero, trying to turn outside. Got a block to the sideline, but a fine open field tackle by Mark Bernardini, the free safety, coming up quickly, the young man out of Eastchester. And Bernardini right there, number 28, just closes the door very quick. Now, one of the things St. John's wanted to improve this year was their speed, Marty. They felt last year they were beaten by a lot of teams. They went to speed in the secondary with Forte and Kurt Ditzler. DeForest has speed as the middle linebacker. He can go sideline to sideline. John Anitra who has been inserted has speed former running back that's something you gotta have well if you have to give up the side you definitely want to come up with the speed and that's what the Redmen have in the secondary third and 12 let's see if St. John's blitz is here they'll stay on the ground Dayuto and he runs into a couple of guys as he crossed the 20 Al Bruno the first guy to hit him and they didn't want to risk putting the ball up and there's a look at Bruno who Marty before he got some injuries last year was quite a football player very quick and his first two years he was in Liberty Conference All-Star hobbled last year put some weight on and has a tremendous amount of potential six foot two sixty senior of course his father Fred Bruno is one of the coaches here well he came back this year mentally ready to play he knew that he had a disappointing year last year due to an injury he wanted to come back take on the leadership role and get in there and play all right Grant's first punt was 42 yards O'Leary will take this at the 38 fine open field tackle Cassio brought him down Gary Cassio on the 38-yard punt, a minus one return, fine open field play by Cassio. And here's Cassio right there. He's one of the sprint men on the punt. You see the reception right there? He's got him, but watch, no room to run. Cassio just comes in and wraps him up. Well, as we mentioned earlier, Buffalo and Hostia's Flying Dutchman collide Saturday afternoon at 1 o'clock right here on Sports Channel, live and exclusive. And we'll see you on Saturday afternoon. Should be a good one. We've got a good one going here. St. John's trailing by a point. First and 10 at their own 36. Sharky to go to the air. Quick out to Ayadivio. Right there to take him down. Bruce Harris one-on-one -on, -one on the open field. And Bruce Harris is probably their best one-on-one -on -one covered man. Right there you see Ayadivio. He goes down. He takes three steps, trying to pick up some positive yard, hoping that he doesn't have that man-to-man -man coverage, but Harris is all over him like a blanket. Well, Marty, it's similar to what Hofstra tries to do sometimes with their receivers, go to that short pass and hope the receiver can break it, four or five-yard pass and hope that he can beat the
the defender. Well, when you have athletes at the wide position, wide receiver's position, you hope that they can do that, but not in man-to-man -man coverage. Second and eight, he's in trouble. Sharkey throws for the near sideline to poor McPherson. Fierce pressure being put on that time. Uh, the pressure from John Sagenario and Jeremy Thode, and there's a look at Thode. He led the team in sacks last year with seven, has five already this year. And Thode is just a complete hustler. He's only 5'10", 205, very quick feet, and he can beat men off the ball. Right here, he's got him. Sharkey off balance. They come in there, and another teammate delivers the blow. Anthony Ferrara, 55, had trouble handling him. Thode just a little too quick for him, Marty. Thode is a Long Island kid from Huntington Station, Wall Whippin High School, not far from where you and I live, out in Suffolk County. Third and eight from the 38 for the Redmond, trailing by a point. Shockey with time. Wide open, Dan Parker, the tight end. Look at him, lower his head to try to get the first down at around the 47-yard line. Well, Bob Rick has said they wanted to work on the young linebackers. Right there, Sharkey shows the patience, goes back. Parker's wide open in the middle, picks up a first down. There's Sharkey. He's looking for Parker right now. He waits till Parker gets in the open, behind all the linebackers, picks up another first down. Nice cut black by Stave uh, Campley, number 78, to cut down one of the men who was just about to get to Sharkey and Parker with a nice reception. They've got to get him more in the offense according to Bob Ricca. And only two receptions before today's game. First and ten from the 47. Sharkey looking on a slant pattern incomplete for Iadivio and that'll stop the clock. The coverage on the play from Mike Woodard. Joe McGann again putting some pressure on number 76, the three-year starter and captain on the defense. And the one thing Sharkey did right there, he's going to get hit. He knows he's going to get hit, but he threw the ball in the only place Iadivio could have caught it, close to the ground. He's not going to risk an interception. Iadivio a real possession type receiver. McPherson of course with more speed. Adivio led the team with 47 catches last year. Six man front right now on second and ten from the 47. Russo tries to find an opening. He cuts to the sideline. Chased down the sideline. He's still going. And knocked down, pushed down by Bruce Harris, the only man who could get to him. Harris knocks him down. It's a big run for Russo. First time that he's broken loose today. And you're talking about quick feet right there. He takes that ball right up the middle. Here it is. It's an easy handoff. The middle linebacker gets cracked down on and watch Russo run. Bob Rick has said he didn't have that breakaway speed, but if it wasn't for number six, Harris coming from behind, there's another touchdown for Russo. There is a flag on the Ready play, Marty. Russo on the defense. We first down. So to be first and goal, nevertheless, a 43-yard run by Russo. So last year, he was held to just 52 yards on that one play. He breaks loose for 43. This young man who came into this game with 4,575 yards rushing in his outstanding career. So the Redmen with a goal-to-go -go situation. And now it looks like St. John's will call timeout here. Our check at Maris has called timeout with 10.18 to go in this first half. Coming up at halftime, Carl Reuter will be talking to St. John's athletic director, Jack Kaiser. Of course, the MAC Conference football has been quite a story this year. St. John's joining the MAC. Marist will join next year along with Duquesne. Duquesne having a fine season. And looking at the conference standing, St. John's leading with a record of 2-0. Iona with a 1-0 mark. St. Peter's, good club, Marty. For 1-1, one one. they've won a couple of games since we saw them lose that heartbreaker here. And Ray Marshall's been outstanding since that opening game. Well, remember, Tuesday, you can catch the Islanders' season opener when they travel to Calgary to take on the Flames. That's the Islanders and the Flames, Tuesday night at 9.30, live and exclusive on Sports Channel. I'll be heading west for the Islanders on Monday, and Larry Roth will be joining the television crew for the New York Islanders this year. Congratulations to Larry, who'll be working this year as the director on the Islander telecast, and want to wish Larry, who, of course, is our director, Director, producer, uh, very good luck in his new endeavor. Right now, St. John's with the ability to talk it over. What do you think uh, Bob Rickett talked about during that timeout? I think that what he's telling his, his Sharky is, hey, we've got the momentum now. We've got into a rhythm. Let's not make a mistake. It's first and goal. We only need five yards. Backs are split. Russo 
Oh, they wouldn't let him go. They wrapped him up. David Caldwell, number 46, got in quickly from his uh, outside position. This kid plays with intensity. He's their big guy, big play guy on defense. Well, they're going to need a big play right here. But any time that Russo has to take the ball outside, somebody's going to have to pick up the outside linebacker. Right there, number 46, Caldwell, is just waiting on him. He's their leading tackler. And against St. John's two years ago in this field, intercepted a sharky pass and ran it for a touchdown. Now Russo in the ball game goes as a wide receiver to the right. He had a touchdown reception last week, remember. Looking for the fade pattern. McPherson can't hang on. He had Harris beaten on the play, but McPherson couldn't hold on. And you can't ask for your quarterback to put the ball in any better position. Right there, McPherson has got to make that reception, has got to give his team the lead. Right here, Sharky, excellent snap. He throws the ball. He knows where McPherson's going to be. And watch McPherson. He goes up, just has to bring that one home. Yeah, McPherson, a guy who will lay out for the ball, make those kind of catches, normally makes that one. Third and goal from the four-yard line. Sharkey in trouble, throws for the end zone, and making the catch for the touchdown. Beautiful reception that time, and the Redmen are on the board. Looked like John Anitra had snuck in. The guy was playing defense before. We told you he was a former running back, and John Anitra makes the touchdown reception. How's that for bringing a guy out of your de defensive uh, alignment into the offense, and he makes the touchdown catch. And Sharkey goes back. If he doesn't get the ball off, Caldwell's going to... Uh, sack him for a major loss. Anitra wide open, makes an excellent reception. And you can tell he played a little defense because watch his hands when he catches the ball. Well, the young man out of Bayshore putting his team in front. He played a little fullback against Wagner. Did not play well. They're going for two, as you see. Sharkey rolling right, looking for the end zone. And now trying to run it, and he's wrestled down. Delayed, and Roger Hancock, number 57, made him pay for that delay. Well, Sharkey right there, it's a rollout. He's looking for a receiver, trying to find an opening. Nobody's there, and there's Hancock to make the tackle. Time out of the field, but the Redmen have rallied to take the lead. 9.31 to go, first half. They're in front, 12-7. I'm paid to And the Redmond lead at 12 to 7. Julian Wise at the 5. To the 20. He's broken some good ones this year. 35-yarder last week against Post. And he returns this one to the 32-yard line. But... All right, Barry, let's take another look at the touch on. Look at Sharky. He's going to get hit by Caldwell, and Anitra just finds an opening. But watch the hands here. This is a true defensive player playing offense. He touches, the touches, catches. Great reception. <laughs> now let's take a look at the, uh, the two points. Right here, Sharky's going to go out. He can't find a receiver, and he's not going to make a mistake. He's going to try to run. He pumps once. Gets hit right there by Hancock, taken down, makes the score 12 to 7. Now they work out of that handball offense, three power backs as they try the right side this time and trying to break free is Matt McDonald who scored the touchdown and he has a strong run, tough to bring this little guy, 5'9", 213 freight train down. He's a little bit of a clone of Carrero, smaller, but a real tough run as he picked up about nine. Let's go down to the field, here's Carl. All right, Barry, just came over from the Maris sidelines, listen to Jim Parity, the head coach, talked to his team when they came off that last series. One thing that he was questioning was their quickness off the ball. He wants them quicker off the ball. He said, and if they do get good field position, Barry, they will run out of the handball offense that you just talked about. Well, Upstairs. Thank you, Carl. They're working that offense right now. Number 35 in the game is Ben Green. Dayudo not in the game right now. They take him out of this offense. McDonald picked up 10 yards on that last count. Carrero stood up and driven right back. Walter DeForest with a big hit. Well, DeForest just shot the hole. We talked about him reading the holes, reading the line, uh, running backs right there. Just an excellent job filling the hole. The Redmond, eight plays, 64 yards. John Anitra, the surprising receiver of that four-yard Sharky pass. The conversion failed, and the Redmond are trailing by a score of, uh, right, leading right now, rather, by a score of 12 to 7. Now number 79, Dixon, has come in as a tight end on second and 10 for the Red Foxes. Carrero tries the left side of the line. 
time. And again, not much there. St. John's really shutting the holes down. DeForest again, combining with John and Itra. Well, DeForest must be on man-to-man -man coverage right there. He's going to cover the fullback wherever he goes. DeForest just comes up, fills the hole, now puts the offense in a situation where it's third and nine. DeForest, we said this was going to be a big test for him. Third, and let's call it about eight. As Gary Cassio lines up wide to the right. One reception so far for Brian McCourt. That 66-yard pass that was really a big run by Carrero on that short pass. And he'll have to go to the air again. He's in trouble. Trying to get away. Chase to the sideline. Throws on the run and throws it away. He had pressure from Steve Dombrowski, number 71. And he also uh, was being chased uh, by another player that time, Young Lee, number 50, who was in uh, on a pass rush situation. Well, Lee just makes an excellent move on the offensive lineman to put pressure on the court. And right now, if you look at this Marist offense, they're out of sync. They're, there's no rhythm to them. No quarterback. They had to go through the handball because they're trying to pick up positive yards. A.J. Grant to punt. This will be his third punt. He's averaged 40 yards. Has time to boot this away. The big 6-5 youngster spirals it downfield. And McPherson will take it at around the 20. And a flag thrown on the play. It could be a block from behind. John Thompson, number seven, on the tackle for the Red Foxes. Along with Ben Green was over there. And might be a hit in the back. We'll wait and see, Marty, as the officials will discuss it. Don't forget we've got more St. John's football coming your way. Next week the Redmen will play at pace, but we'll have them back here on Sports Channel on October the 23rd when they take on Sacred Heart. Illegal block in the back, above the waist, on the return, 10-yard penalty. First down. And number 34, John Anitra, the man that just scored the touchdown, is going to get called for that penalty. So you give it and take it, eh, Marty? Well, you'd rather give it your team six points and then take a little penalty. That's uh, well put, Mr. Lyons. So St. John's leading 12-7. Their defense after that first drive, and really one play has been outstanding. They have shut Maris down. Sharky to go inside. This is Russo. Russo going for the first down and more. Boy, it's tough for one man to bring him down as he gets out to the 30-yard line. About a 14-yard pickup. David Caldwell finally stopped him. Well, Russo's got those happy feet. He's coming through the lines, and he's reading his block, and he reads where he's got to go next. Watch his feet. Watch how quick they are and how he can dance through the hole. Right here, he stutter steps outside. He's going to stutter step back inside, and Caldwell's going to come up with the tackle, but not until he gets the first down. Now Russo picking up the first down right there, closing in on 100 yards in this first half alone after that big 43-yard pickup. Sharkey play action, looking for the sideline, throws into traffic. That was a tough pass to complete. Iadivio, the intended receiver, Bruce Harris, along with Malik Woodard over there, and he threw into a lot of coverage there, Marty. And there's Iadivio right there, Anthony Iadivio. Well, isolate on him. He goes down. It's going to be a pump. He's got to, he comes up, gets a pop from Harris. That's what takes him out of the rhythm and out of his route. That pop by number six, Harris. Now Sharkey's number is not impressive. Seven for 19. There is a flag on the play. And the official, Mr. DeSimone, will let us know about it. Got a face mask, five-yard penalty against the defense. Boy, does that really kill you if you're a coach. And it's an automatic first down, Marty. So the Redmen get out of trouble there. The ball up at the 35-yard line. And your defensive back, Bruce Harris, number six, comes up with a big play, and it's nullified by a face mask. Ernie Atwood in the ballgame for the first time. Number 23 is a wide receiver to the bottom of your screen. Sharkey looking deep for Atwood, a speedster, going up with practice to contact made, and there's going to be a pass interference penalty. And that's going to be offensive pass interference. Right there, the receiver, Atwood, he's wide open, but Sharkey, the ball gets too much air underneath it. Hatwood goes back and hits the defensive uh, corner in the back. That's going to be offensive pass interference. Well, Crack was the man defending on the play. He was beaten earlier on a touchdown. And the officials once again conferring. In case you're just tuning in, St. John's fell behind early 7-0, first drive of the game. And on Sharkey's two touchdown passes, they've taken a 12-7 lead. As they discuss it, Sean Sharkey will make his decision. We'll find out what his decision is and the penalty right now from referee DeSimone. 
Alright, we have two penalties on a play. We had an ineligible downfield. That penalty would be declined. We had pass interference against the offense. That would be accepted. Half the distance to the goal line. Well, the penalty on Atwood, as we pointed out, Marty. So Aaron Atwood nailed for the penalty. Half the distance to the goal line. Boy, look at the yardage they're going to lose here. Yeah, but Atwood right there at the 29. He pushes Crack away to go up for the ball. You can't do that. Crack's got the awareness to look back. Everybody has a right for the ball, but Atwood cannot push off. Now the inexperience of the youngster, Atwood. Right now, St. John's facing a first and 20. Sharkey on the draw play. Russo. Russo has five. He has ten of those yards back. As he gets to the 30-yard line, pickup of ten. And he's over the 100-yard mark for the 24th time in his career. 24 out of 34 games over the 100-yard mark. And a big thing right there, he's back to the original line of scrimmage. Gets his offense a little bit of room to work. Now it's second and ten. And right now, the Redmen leading in the ball game with 6.14 to go in the first half. Have Tom Jadis as a receiver to the left. As you look at Russo, you see Jadis at the bottom of your screen. Looking for Jadis to the near side. Makes the catch. Short pickup. Crack was covering on the play. He stays in bounds. Clock continues to tick. It'll be a third down. And Sharkey right there. The awareness to know that the blitz is going to come. He audible at the line of scrimmage. Gets his wide receiver to run it out. He takes a three-step. Delivers it. Picks up five yards. Tommy McPherson, who last week had six catches for 107 yards and two touchdowns, has checked into the game for Jadis. Now St. John's has picked up. 16 of those 20 yards they faced. It's third and four. Russo, the single setback. Sharkey, quick pitch to the tight end, Parker. Parker, look at him, fight for the extra yardage again. And goes to Parker for the first down. That's the second time he's come up with a big first down play, Dan Parker. And then there's Parker right there with that leg strength. He gets hit, which would have been short of the first down. He keeps his legs moving and picks up the first down. Watch Parker, he takes a hit right here, just keeps going, sheds it, picks up the first down. Kept spinning, you got to like that, Marty. He's not a big guy playing tight end, 5'11", about 188 pounds. Well, he's playing a lot bigger than his statue right there. Young man from Lindenhurst High School on Suffolk County. Has two catches for 18 yards. First and 10 for the Redmen. Sharkey. Throws that one away. Again, threw into coverage. Iadivio had three men around him. Pressure from Jeremy Thode. Caldwell and Harris were covering on the play. But there was a lack of communication right there between Sharkey and Iadivio. Iadivio is running around. He's pushing the defenders. Sharkey throws it. Iadivio hasn't even made the cut, made the turn to his pattern yet. Robert Toronto, big blocking sophomore fullback. Number 33 has checked in for St. John's. Here's a look at Harris out of Philadelphia. Radio TV major at Marist. They've got a fine program in that area. He led the team in interceptions last year with five, Harris. Looks like a blitz coming here. Sharkey on the draw. And Russo will not get away. He spun into the arms of number two, Eddie Dorganis. And they had good penetration once again on that play. And just uh, unable to get away was Russo. Well, number 85, Omar Livens comes in there. He wraps him up the first time, slows him up. A lot of pursuit on this Marist. Steve has a lot of swarm. That's why they've held running backs down in rushing. But tonight, Anthony Russo seems to be making something happen. Yeah, Russo had that big 43-yard run, of course, to set up one touchdown. And he has cracked the 100-yard mark after being held at just 52 yards against him last year. Third and 10 from the 45. Sharkey has an alley to run. He pumps, gets by one man, runs out of bounds, shy of the first down, chased out by John Saginaria. And that's what Bob Ricker wants to see Sharky do. If you don't have a receiver, don't force it. Pick up some positive yards. Don't throw that interception. That's been a problem with Sharky forcing the ball. They had felt that uh, going into this year, he'd have a big year, Marty, because he finished strong last year. His completion percentage, his confidence had gone up. He has thrown for seven touchdown passes, but 
the completion percentage not good and it's not good tonight Parker to punt from the 40 booms this one Harris will watch this sail over his head and St. John's trying to get it before it went into the end zone just missing that attempt was number 42 Kurt Ditzler who had that big interception earlier Kurt Ditzler fine student talk by our good friend Bob Shepard and Ditzler is out there hustling he's trying to make something happen all he's got to do is pop that ball down there's a man a freshman playing in the secondary an excellent leader and he's going to grow with this program he's only six foot 176 pounds. He's from Iceland and he's strong, he's quick, and he's durable. And he's had two big interceptions on Sports Channel, Marty. Making his presence felt in front of the home fans. Young man, as you said, from Iceland. Now let's see what uh, Brian McCourt can do with under four minutes to go in the first half. This Marist offense outside of that first drive and outside of one play, the big touch, the big pass to Carrera has done nothing. Look at Bruno block that one as McCourt tried to hit the right side uh, of the line with a pass, and there was big Al Bruno with the block. And McCourt only takes a three-step three drop here, and if he's going to throw the ball in three-step, your offensive lineman has got, they have to cut the defensive lineman so he can throw over them. Well, McCourt one for five, that one reception for 66 yards to Carrero, and has thrown two interceptions. Second and ten from the 20. Kyle Carrero is injured. We'll get a report. The doctor's checking him out. Number 33, Matt McDonald in there. McDonald blocking for Diudo. And Diudo skirts down the left sideline. Run out of bounds. Close to the first down marker at around the 30-yard line. So a good burst of speed for the first time by Diudo, who's been held in check in this game so far. But it all starts with the block for the first time. We've seen blocking up front. Diudo gets to the outside as we look at uh, Carrero over there tying his shoe, getting a re, uh, his ankle retake. Well, they check working on that right foot. Maybe just the sneaker problem, but we'll keep an eye on it. They work out of that hand bone now on third and two. Now the clock stopped here by the officials. Red Foxes of Marist. And the Redmen of St. John's meeting for the 16th time. Nine men up on the line for St. John's trying to stop this third and short play. Here's Diudo. Has the first down as he cracked off the left side of the line. Walter DeForest on this tackle, but they used some of that beef up front just piled out over the left side to get the first down. But when you have a running back like Diudo, you want to get him outside. You want to get him against air. Right there, he's running in there with the big boys, and he's only picking up one or two yards. you got to get him outside the tackle so he can pick up some positive yards. Dan Phelan, their wide receiver, he's their deep threat, lines up wide to the right. They haven't looked for him so far tonight. First and 10 at the 31, 324 to go. The court looking for Phelan, makes the catch on the crossing pattern, and he's pulled down by Kirk Ditzler, but not before he picked up a first down and 15 yards on the play. And Phelan right there comes off the line. He's, he's not in a bump and run. There's a flag on the play, and Marist is being called for holding. The court, this is the first pass he's delivered in a long time that's right on target. Phelan catches the ball, but there's a flag on the play. A mental mistake by Marist offensive lineman. Might have been 66, Steve Marr. I don't know if we'll get Good another hold. look. Offense for first down. That really has to hurt the Marist club. That's only the second completion they've had. Let's go down to the field, and here's Carl Reuter. Barry, it'd be very interesting to see if the Marist quarterback, Brian McCourt, will throw towards number 42 in the secondary for St. John's, Kurt Ditzler. He has been limping throughout this football game ever since he had the interception a while back. 42, Kirk Ditzler is limping pretty badly right now. It'll be interesting to see if Maris throws out his number. Well, Carl, he had a strained quad in the first game we did against St. Peter's. He's a tough kid battling from an injury. Uh, he stayed in there all the way. The court screening it against the pressure, but Cassio could not hang on. St. John's had a man right there, Chris Carew. Had he caught that ball, Carew would have probably wrapped him up easily for a loss. Well, McCourt right there, he's got to set his feet. He cannot throw off balance. He's going back. He's under pressure, but he's got to deliver. Got to give your receivers an opportunity to make something happen. Now the Red Foxes, Marty, have been hurt with a lot of penalties, particularly holding penalties in this game. That's a credit to the St. John's uh, line, which the much maligned line, they've been putting pressure on uh, that offensive line. And the holding penalties have ensued. Pitch now. This is Diudo trying to turn it, and again, St. John's right there at the 25-yard line to break up the play. And there's John Anitra coming up with the play, along with Steve Dombrowski. And Anitra was there. 
But Dayudo, he gets an excellent block from uh, McDonald. He's got to take the ball outside. Instead, he goes inside. And Mitra's right there to make the tackle. The ball up at the 24-yard line. So it's third and about 17 right here. They need a big play here to keep the drive alive. 2.25 to go. The Red Foxes trailing. Chris DeTorio lines up wide to the top of your screen as a flanker. The court with time, throwing over the middle. He's got a man wide open trying to make the catch. Number 80 was Andrew Zidnarski, the tight end. And he makes the catch up at the 44-yard line. A first down, Mark Bernardini on the coverage. Zidnarski making his first reception in his career. And right there, he's wide open. He goes down the field. And he has the awareness to know how far he has to get to pick up the first down. So Zidzarski coming up with the big catch, the regular tight end, is out of the lineup tonight. Michael Milo, separated shoulder, and he got a chance to make a big catch there. McCourt with time, dumps it off short here, Diuto at the 50, 45, and pulled down by Steve Diabicus inbounds, but it's another first down at the 41-yard line. And Diuto, he's just coming out of that slot position right there over the middle, fading in front of the linebackers, gets an excellent reception, and then picks up another first down. 16-yard pass and catch for Don Dayudo. Doesn't catch many passes. That's his fourth catch of the year. And the court looks like he has the plays on the wrist, a la Illinois State from their defense, you recall, last week against Hofstra. Now Dayudo going in motion. McDonald the single setback. The court sends everybody in. Wide open Phelan, but he overthrew him. Ditzler again on the coverage. That'll stop the clock, Marty, with a minute 15 to go. And second and 10 coming from the 40-yard line. And Ayuda right there, he's going in motion. He's going to swing back underneath the linebackers. But number 47, Walter DeForce, is there. It doesn't free up the middle. John Anitra checks into the ball game for the Redmen. And now, DeTorio will line up wide to the left. Sidarski has a flanker to the left. The court with time. Now scrambling. He's a good scrambler. Throwing on the run. And it is going to be a completion. No, nope. let's see if they're going to rule it a completion at the 28-yard line. Apparently they are. Chris DeTorio with the diving catch for another first down with Ken Forte on the coverage. Well, watch McCourt back here. He's going to have to scramble to get this off. And DeTorio right here. He goes down. Number 20 scoops it up right off the turf. Picks up another first down. Excellent catch for the sophomore from Danbury. His first catch of the year. Maris with under a minute to go. Clock ticking. First and ten. Trailing in the ball game, 12 to 7. Good drive by McCourt. Here's the end around to Phelan. He's got blockers down the sideline. Phelan at the 20, 15, dancing down the sideline. Into the end zone. Let's see if there are any flags. No. It's a touchdown on the end around. A 27-yard run for Danny Phelan. And Phelan was wide open once he turned the corner because number 34. For the Redmen, he was out of position. And John Anita, he came down too far. And there's Bob Ricca. He's very upset about this. Marty, there's a case of a, an inexperienced defensive player. Nietzsche just moved over from offense to defense, perhaps making the mistake there. Well, Nietzsche, they always tell you a trail as deep as the deepest back. And there's Phelan. He's coming around. It's a perfect pitch. Excellent pursuit. And Scott Kerr gave a great punch on that front offensive line. Keep an eye on number 51, the center. But watch Phelan right here. We're going to see 81 come into the picture. But watch 34 at the top. He goes for the fake. He's got to stay deep. And as soon as Phelan gets around the side, there's nothing but white jerseys and nothing but green in front of him. Care leading the way down that sideline through a nice block. And Danny Phelan with the surprise play. The kid out of Richfield, Connecticut, the 6'1 senior, who has a flair for the big play, they tell us. Has good speed. 4-5 made a nice catch earlier on this drive. And Bob Rick is up now trailing 13 to 12 with just 38 seconds to go in this first half. And we just saw Bob Rick and he's talking to his defensive coaches about, hey, who's got the trail position? That's taught at an early age. You have to have a trailer to stay as deep as the offensive back. 
Well, two years ago against St. John's, Phelan scored on a 73-yard touchdown. He ran 50 yards after making the catch. That was the go-ahead touchdown as Maris was in the midst of a three-game winning streak against the Redmen then. And Phelan, he's a big target at 6'1", but he only has 160 pounds on those bones. He's a skinny guy. They call him a uh, thin man. Right now they're going for the extra point try, the two-point conversion here. McDonald and Diudo lining up behind the quarterback, and McCourt doesn't like what he sees, so they've called a timeout. And that's a great time for McCourt to call a timeout. They have plenty of time. Go over there, discuss what you have to do. Let's get these two points. There's only 38 seconds left on the clock. And there is the youngish looking head coach, the 1984 graduate of Maine. Over pursued quite a bit of the Redmen here. We'll watch on this failing touchdown run of 27 yards. Well, here it is from the beginning. Watch McCord. He fakes into the middle, pulls the ball out. There's the pitch. There's failing going around. There's not a red jersey to be found. He's got a whole wall of offensive linemen out there. And watch. He starts high stepping it right there. He ought to get it into the end zone first. We told you he's got a flair for the big play. He led the team in receptions the last two years, Phelan. It's a ball club that doesn't throw the ball much. But nice drive. McCourt, who had thrown only that one reception, that short pass, threw on a couple of nice receptions, and they brought it in for a quick team. Well, this makes it exciting for the second half. Right here, if they pick up the two-point conversion, it's 15 to 12. If they don't, we have a 13, one-point game and a whole 30 minutes to play. Well, if you'll recall, a couple of weeks ago, St. John's, of course, rallied against St. Peter's and won the game of the fourth quarter dramatically with a touchdown and the extra point. And again, they're going for the two here. McDonald, the single setback. Now Dayuto going in motion. And looking for the end zone, the ball tipped and incomplete. DeForest getting a hand on that ball. Boy, he's been around the ball all night. The middle linebacker for St. John's. He was, he's been everywhere the first half. And right there, uh, Brian McCord, he has to be happy with that drive. There's only 38 seconds. Let's not make a mistake defensively. Let's make this an exciting second half. Let's take another look at the uh, replay. Watch McCourt. He's hoping that the defensive linemen will all go in there, but not number 47, DeForest. He's staying at home. He's right there in the middle of that screen, and he breaks it up. So extra points have been hard to come by for either club tonight. It's a one-point ball game. As from our end zone camera here at Redmond Field, we can tell you that seven plays, 80 yards. Nice drive of three minutes and 19 seconds. And uh, Phelan on that 27-yard end around has put the Marist Red Foxes in front. So Marist scored early, then they've scored late in this first half, and they hold a one-point lead. But I think Bob Ricca, too, uh, when he goes in to talk to his squad, he's going to say, hey, guys, see, we can do whatever we want out there if we just stop and think and we're patient. And he's got to be happy with the performance of Sharkey and Russo, and they got to get Ivadivio back involved with the game. And speaking of Ivadivio, back to receive the kick. And the Redmen trailing by a point. Don't forget, coming up at halftime, Jack Kaiser, St. John's Athletic Director, will be Carl's guest. Boy, the Redmen soccer team having another great season. They're undefeated. And uh, coming into play this week with eight wins and a tie, number six in the nation. They were NCAA team last year. Ayadivio at the 11. They did a big return here. Right up the gut, across the 30, about a 20-yard return uh, to the 31-yard line, brought down on the play by John Kelly. Well, once again, a reminder that Tuesday it's hockey action. You can catch the Islanders' season opener when they travel to Calgary to take on the Flames. That's the Islanders and the Flames, Tuesday night at 9.30, live and exclusive on Sports Channel. Islanders opening up the season with four games on the road, Marty. Calgary, Edmonton, then they'll play the Ducks of Anaheim, and before coming home, they'll play the L.A. Kings. Sharkey with time running out. Look it. He's got Parker open, will be spun down and pulled down by number 75, John Sacramento. Well, Sacramento's going to get credit for the sack, but give a lot of credit to number 39, Jerome Thode. He was the first man back there. Sharkey a little bit shaken up, Sacramento at 2'6", 2, 264, threw him pretty hard to the turf. Sacramento's second sack. He is a tough nose guard. Let's take a look well, at Well, there's it. what makes it happen. Number 39, he forces him up. Sacramento comes over 
and just slams him to the ground. Kyle Carrero has been taken off the field to the locker room and apparently uh, bothered by a leg injury. We'll try to get a report from Dan Sullivan, sports information director, is up here in the booth working with us. Great job up at Maris. And you see Bob Rickett, he's got to be telling Sharky, looking up 19 seconds, let's not make a mistake. Let's go out there. If we try the Hail Mary, fine. If not, let's just hand it off to number 21, Anthony Rizzo. He's been making things happen. We'll go into the halftime only being down by one point. Well, St. John's on Sports Channel, Marty's had a history of dramatic finishes. We saw one earlier here this year against St. Peter's. A couple of years ago, several dramatic finishes. And we saw Iona. one a couple of years ago against Iona with the uh, field goal right there at the end. John Ludwith making his debut as a freshman place kicker, booting it on the final play of the game. And as we mentioned, more St. John's football coming your way here on Sports Channel. And hope that you'll be tuned in for those games. Sacred Heart on the 23rd will be down at Georgetown on the 6th and back here on Thanksgiving morning against Stony Brook. Sharkey with the time running out, 15 seconds, throwing deep up the middle, looking for Russo to be picked off. Harris fumbles the football. It's loose, pile up there at the 41-yard line. Mike Woodard may be the man who has recovered, and it appears to be that way. And Woodard was just back there playing center field. Right there, Sharkey goes back. It's as good as a punt. Six seconds remaining. And you see, speaking of punt, there's A.J. Grant, big number five. He's going to be the quarterback here. He is a backup quarterback at 6'5", 260. And he would have had a shot. He has an arm like a cannon, so look for the Hail Mary. He's going to get his receivers out there. You don't want to throw McCourt's arm out before <laughs> halftime. So just take your punter back there. He's uh, a big boy. And tell him to drop back and just launch it. 6'5", 260. Here's the dream for everybody. He steps back. He steps up. He's going to launch this one down the field. Ditzler there, and Ditzler has picked it off at around the five-yard line. Well, I tell you, you've got to give a lot of credit to Ditzler right there. He's playing back there. He had an excellent first half. Carl said that he was playing hurt. He almost downed the uh, punt before it went into the end zone. Two big interceptions, playing his heart out tonight. What an arm on that guy, though, Mark. He threw that ball about 60 yards in the air. Well, Barry, if you're 6'5", 265, you ought to be able to throw it that Well, way. how far can you throw the ball? All right, Mark. Down to the field, here's Carl Reuter with Bob Rickett. All right, Barry, thanks very much. Coach, overheard you talking to the team. Two big plays have really hurt you. That 66-yard pass to the touchdown in the end of the round, right at the end of the half. Yeah, those two plays, I think another big key call was third and 20 or 25. And they completed the ball up the middle here to keep that drive going. So actually three plays. Those three plays, that was the half. All right, any time. major adjustments? Anthony Russo seems to be running the football pretty well tonight. Yeah, we're doing all right offensively. We're starting to hit now, and uh, we'll be okay. Do you notice That's anything? Ditzla has two interceptions. Is he playing hurt back there? He's limping. He has shin splints. But, uh, you know, it's just painful. But once the play starts, he forgets about it. All right, Coach. Good luck in the second half. Thank you, Carl. All right, Head Coach Bob Rick of the St. John's Redmen. The Redmen go off the field here, trailing by one to the Maris Red Foxes. When we come back to Redmond Field and the campus of St. John's, we'll have a close-up look at his fine institution, as well as speaking to the athletic director here, Jack Kaiser. Stay with us. You always hear us talk about St. John's University right here in Jamaica, Queens. Well, let's take a close-up look at this great institution. Still the greatest city in the world. The thought leader and culture center for the nation. The financial and communications capital of the globe. A reservoir of resources for virtually everything. What better place for a university? St. John's. The nation's largest Catholic university, and according to U.S. News and World Report, one of America's best national universities, makes New York its home. St. John's has two conveniently located campuses in the city. One in Hillcrest, Queens, on a hundred rolling acres within view of the Manhattan skyline. And another on one of the most attractive sites in New York, and one of the highest elevations on the East Coast, 
Grimes Hill, Staten Island. Action of the pestle in the mortar is not a grind. Here. I'm ready, I'm in its shape, and I'm ready to go. I have eligibility left. You do have some eligibility yeah. left, so we don't even have to check the record book on that. Tell us about uh, this new MAC Football League. Uh, you've got to be excited about it. I certainly am. Uh, there are six teams with two more coming next year, Marist and Duquesne. I think we're all very uh, much alike. We're private schools. Uh, a lot of them are Catholic schools, and uh, we have the same philosophy. So I think the competition, as you see it tonight, at one point at halftime, is going to be very fierce and very competitive. Jack, I guess the way schools are going right now at this 1AA level, I guess it's a cost-cutting measure, but you still have quality football. We certainly do. I think uh, the fans out there can see that it's good football. Uh, the kids are very enthusiastic. They've all had high school experience, and we feel that it's a good level of ball for St. John's University, and of course the other schools feel the same way. You know, we had Rich Enzer on the first telecast of St. John's football here on the Sports Channel. Is this the way a lot more schools might go to this 1AA level of where uh, you can keep your costs down and still play very competitive and very good football? I think that uh, Rich was correct. Uh, a lot of the teams that are scholarship uh, schools are losing a lot of money. And I think in this uh, hard economic time, I mean, you can't do that too long. So I think a lot, a lot of teams on the 1AA uh, level are thinking about it. Uh, they might not talk about it too much, but I think that's the way to go in the future. If we switch gears a little bit, uh, in the first half, Barry Landers was talking with Marty uh, Lyons. They were commenting about the soccer program here at St. John's having an outstanding season. Well, we have a great young coach, uh, Dave Mazur. Uh, he's really built the team up uh, since he came. This is his third season. Uh, we're undefeated at this uh, time. Not that you expect to be that way for the whole season, but uh, I've seen most of the games here at home. We play quality ball. We're well disciplined, and Dave has them uh, trained well, they're in good shape, and we're hoping to continue and have a very, very fine season. Of course, we'd be uh, very much pleased if we were to make the NCAA tournament again. That'd be real good, and of course, with the chill in the air, you know it's not too long before we go inside and we play basketball with Brian Mahoney's team, and uh, I guess the announcement uh, I was told about a week ago, you named uh, Coach Bob Rick of the football team. He's now an assistant athletic director here. Yes, uh, Bob, in his off-season, does a lot of things for us on the administrative level. He's the head of our recruiting committee. He's the administrator for the lacrosse team. Uh, he's head of the uh, camp program in the summer. That uh, We have about six camps, uh, different sports. So he has assumed a lot of those duties, and we just thought we'd make it official. Jack Kaiser, it feels good for me to come home. Being a graduate of St. John's, thanks again once again for that hospitality. Always fun to be here at St. John's with you and your folks here. Well, we'd like to thank you and Sports Channel for having our games on, and we feel that it's an entertaining game. We hope the fans at home and here at the stadium feel the same way. Okay, Jack Kaiser has been my guest, the Vice President and Athletic Director here at St. John's. When we come back to Redmond Field, joined by Marty Lyons. Halftime numbers and highlights to follow, so stay with us. game and you see how hard it is to run against that St. John's defense. DeForest is just doing an excellent job in there and uh, the offensive line for the Redmen they're opening some holes for uh, Russo. Been a game of big plays. Well big plays and penalties, first downs, it's just been a mental game and I think Marist right now is behind. They're losing, they're hurting themselves. Alright let's take a look at the AC Delco first half stats and uh, Marty when you look at the numbers what do you like, what do you dislike? Well the first thing you have to like is the first down. St. John's is right out there with 14. They're getting Russo involved in the game. They're getting Aya Divio involved in the game. And they've got Sharkey where he's settling down. Rushing yards, it's a toss-up. you got a 108 to 97. It's been a very physical game.
game. A lot of turnovers, a lot of penalties. Well, a lot of penalties on Marist. They're leading by one. They could be way up. They're taking themselves out of field position. St. John started off a little shaky with Sharky in the beginning. Sharky looked out of rhythm. He went over there. He talked to Bob Ricca. Now he seems like he's settled down a little bit. Now let's take a look at some of the first half highlights. And of course, Maris got it going real fast. How about uh, 12.33 left in the quarter and Matthew McDonald from a yard out. So right there, McDonald gets an excellent block by his lead blocker, takes it in. He's the short yardage man. He's already has four touchdowns on 12 carries this year. St. John's was trailing 7-0 after the first quarter, but they were able to come back on a third and five. Sean Sharkey finding Tom McPherson. Well, we talked about Sharkey settling down right there. You got McPherson. He's going to push the defender all the way into the end zone, turn around, make the reception. Extra point, no good. Maris holding on to a one-point lead at 7-6. How about a little bit later on? St. John's takes the lead at 12-7. Sharkey finds a, a linebacker out there, number 34, John Anitra. Well, Anitra right here comes to the middle. Everybody looking for Russo. Anitra shows you what a defensive hands look like. He catches it, pops it back into himself. Two-point, extra point, no good. As I said, St. John's leads at 12-7. We move to 38 seconds left, Marty, in the first half. Little razzle-dazzle, the end around. Dan Phelan, 27 yards for the score. Well, Phelan right here gets outside of defense and takes it. He has a wide open, perfect end around, perfect timing, great call. Goes in for the touchdown, makes it 13 to 12 here at halftime. All right, they did go for the two-point conversion, and they did miss, but it is 13 to 12. Any major adjustments that you see either coach making? Well, I think Bob Ricca, he goes in there and he tells Sharky, all right, it's your game. Let's settle down. Let's keep Russo involved. Maris, you got to go out there. You've got to stop Russo. We talked about the running back. We talked about the line. Now we're going into the second half, and it's who can make the most tackles. We also talked about the trenches. That could be where the war is won. Do you think so far that that's where the game is and who's ahead right now in the trenches. Well, right now, even though they're not ahead on points, I'd give uh, St. John's the upper hand because you look at the numbers by Russo, you look at the pressure that they're putting on the court. Right now, they've got to take advantage of that and they've got to tire McCourt and make him make mistakes. All right, we're at halftime here at Redmond Field, campus of St. John's. The Maris Red Fox is leading the Redmond of St. John's by the score of 13-12. to 12. Back with more right after this timeout. Stay with us. at Hostia Stadium as the Bulls of the University of Buffalo take on the Hostia Flying Dutchman Saturday afternoon at 1, live and exclusive on Sports Channel. Last year, Buffalo embarrassed Hostia and Hostia will be looking for revenge on Saturday afternoon. You'll see it right here on Sports Channel. Well, another exciting Redmond basketball season is about to start and there's no better way to follow the team than with a season ticket. Now, the full season package sells for $290 and includes 12 games at Alumni Hall, the Fordham game at the Nassau Coliseum, and six contests at Madison Square Garden. Now, for more information, you can call area code 718-990-6211. That's 718-990-6211. Should be another great year with Brian Mahoney having Sean L. Scott shooting guard Derek Brown back and they signed of course James Scott an exciting 6'6 player who played the last couple of years in junior college. Let's go down to the field and get a report from Carl Reuter. All right, down here on the field with Jim Parry, the coach of Marison. Coach, you've got a one-point lead. You said you're very fortunate because you made a lot of mistakes. Yes, we did. We made a lot of mental mistakes, and uh, we had a few penalties called on us in the first half, and we're just looking to clean it up in the second half and uh, hopefully come out on top. But you had to be proud and uh, real happy about that end of the round. Phelan takes it in for the go-ahead score at the end of the half. Yeah, that was great execution by our quarterback. He hung on into it to the last minute, and uh, he dished it off to Danny, and he got it in the end zone. Very fortunate to come up 13-12 at the half. Any major adjustments that we might see in the second half? Uh, we're going to keep going after them and uh, try to control the line of scrimmage a little bit better. They, uh, the defensive line handles us a little bit in the second half or in, in the second quarter, so we're looking to take it on in, uh, in the second half. Kyle Carrero was taken off. Is he okay? Uh, they're evaluating him at halftime, and we're going to see what happens right now. They taped him up, and he's going to give it a go in the second half. All right, Coach, 
Good luck in that Great. second half. Thank you. Yeah, All right, Jim Parry, the coach of Maris. Now let's go back upstairs to Barry and Marty. All right, Carl, thank you very much. And you gotta like the enthusiasm and the, the quiet confidence of Jim uh, uh, Parity, the uh, young coach. And he heads to the sideline. We'll be back with the start of the second half in just a moment. You're watching St. John's Football on Sports Channel. <laughs> Halloween is oh, coming, we'll find Marty. Out, uh, in the next 30 minutes, baby. We'll find out. Well, this is the final night, of course, of September. Halloween coming in a month. And the Redmen will be kicking off. John Ludwig about to kick off. As you heard, Carrero with an eight ankle injury is going to give it a try here in the second half. Julian Wise and Don Dayudo are back to receive the kick at the five-yard line. The Redmen trailing by a point as the second half is underway. Dayudo will take this at the four-yard line. To the 15, 20, has some blocking. Up across the 30, 35, and an excellent return as he gets up to the, about the 43-yard line, about a 38-yard return for Don Dayudo, and they have excellent field position to start the second half. And Dayudo comes out in the beginning of the, the uh, third quarter with a big kickoff return. Gives his offense excellent field position. Well, Danny McCourt, 4 for 10, 113 yards, three interceptions in that first half. And let's see what he does here, but he did lead his team down for that go-ahead touchdown drive as the Redmen are trailing. Matt McDonald in the ball game at fullback. And here's the pitch to Dayudo. McDonald misses his block, and John Anitra throws him down, but Anitra spinning him down may have gotten a face mask there. And Dayudo right there, he's got the read to block of number 33, Matt McDonald. Matt McDonald, he's going to block the defender outside. Dayudo's got to run it inside. Well, if that's against St. John's, that's got to really bother the coaching staff. Anitra had him wrapped up, didn't have to pull the face mask if indeed that's the call. Got a face mask, five yard penalty against the defense. Now watch McDonald, he's going to knock Anitra outside. Dayudo, he's got to take it inside, but there's the face mask, he pulls him to the ground, and you hate to see that. When you get a face mask, let it go. Try not to injure the receiver or the running back. So instead of about a five or six yard loss, they pick up five yards, and it is now first and five. Cassio and Phelan line up as wide receivers to the left. Working out of the pro set, McDonald the fullback. And Dayudo tries the middle of the line, crosses midfield behind the block of center. Scott Gear, Al Bruno, and Steve Dabrowski combining on the tackle. And the worst thing about that penalty is they pick up first uh, five yards and it stays. It remains first down. Now we're in a second and two situation. And heading off Steve Dabrowski, the 6'1 sophomore from Belmore, Long Island. Undersized tackle. Dayudo is also shaken up. Remember Carrero got hurt in that first half with an ankle injury, so that outstanding tandem getting banged up a little bit. Dayudo's a very durable kid Marty reading the press up in Poughkeepsie this week he said he's got a rivalry going with Russo he really wanted this game badly well it looks at, as we look at it, it might be a contact lens he's holding his eyes uh, hopefully that's what it is because he'll be back out on the field 10 carries for Diodo for 38 yards their all-time leading rusher second and two Julian Wise has replaced him as tailback Wise a speedster as well about the same size they go to the uh, fullback and McDonald look at him still go they can't bring him down to the 40-yard line. What a bull runner Matt McDonald is. You can see why they use him in those short yardage situations and why he scored four touchdowns on 12 carries. Well, you have to make that tackle right there. McDonald stopped at the line of scrimmage. He bounced around. He almost come to a complete stop. Watch. He's right here behind his offensive lineman. He looks for a hole. Right there, he breaks one tackle, scrambles for six yards. Three carries for 22 yards for McDonald and a touchdown. So the second string backfield in there now. The court to throw lobbing it for the right sideline for Phelan against Ditzler. And it'll set up a second down. Well, if Ditzler is hurt, uh, Bob Ricca should hope that he's hurt every game. What a tremendous first half. Right there he comes out, shows excellent speed, excellent coverage. He is limping a little bit, but what a competitor he is. See that left leg wrapped up with the black tape around it. He's had shin splints, as you heard Bob Ricca tell Carl Reuter earlier, and also was bothered by a quad injury to start the beginning. 
beginning of the season, he is definitely limping. And plus, playing the corner where you're isolated on a lot of man-to-man -man coverage, it's tough. Don Diuto back in the ball game on second and ten from the 40-yard line. McCourt, slant pattern to fail, it pops in the air, incomplete. That time, Ken Forte was covering, along with John Anitra, as that ball popped loose. And there's a reception fail, he's got to come down with, he's wide open, he's on a slant pattern. McCourt, he, first time in a long time, he has time to throw the ball, he delivers it, Fallon just doesn't concentrate, doesn't bring it home. Watch this, McCourt, what a throw, and it's right on target, hits him in the chest, and you teach your wide receivers, catch with your hands, not your chest. So it's third and ten. Seven-man front for St. John's. McCourt play action, looking for a screen here. Screens it out to Diuto, has a couple of blockers, and will be taken down close to the first down at the 31-yard line. Brought down on the play by Mark Bernardini, and Ralph Taco, number 26, as a nickelback brought And that's the well. first time that play has worked all day. Right there, McCourt was patient enough to let Diuto come across the line. As we take a look at, there's McCourt. He's going to let the play develop. He's getting his offensive lineman out there. There's an excellent block on the force. And Diodo does the rest. He picks up nine yards of fourth and one. And Maris is going to go for it. All right, they're going for it. Big block that time by Mark DeLuca, number 50. Here's the pitch. They tried for the first down and they're stopped. Walt DeFar stopping the play as they went to Julian Rise and he was stuffed. And Walter DeForce, that's a big time hit. Right there, he just delivers the blow, knocks him back, they actually lose the yard, and the Redmen will take over on first down. Let's listen to the natural sound as we go to the replay down on the field just moments ago. You'll hear the popping in sound as it was heard just seconds ago. That's a middle linebacker for you. That's what you want out of the middle linebacker. Come up, deliver those punishing blows. First and 10 at the 33-yard line for Sharkey. Quick out for Adivia. Almost picked off. The defending was Harris, said he almost picked that low pass off. It'll gain for three yards for Ayadivio, make it a second and seven. And Ayadivio, if he breaks that uh, tackle by Harris, he has nothing but the end zone to see in front of him. Now Sharkey now 10 for 24 for only 71 yards. Two interceptions to two touchdowns. McPherson leaves and is replaced in the ball game right now by Broadway who comes in as a wide receiver. Jadis also in the game along with O'Leary, number 84. And they go inside to Russo. Not much of a hole. Flag thrown after the tackle was made. John Sanjanero again coming up with a stop. He's been involved in a lot of tackles. The freshman linebacker, number 32. And let's see about the penalty. And a lot of penalties right there, Barry. A lot of holding on the offensive lineman. There's not a lot of room in there, but you can't hold. You can use your hands, but you can't grab the jersey. You can't grab a hold of that uh, defender. Marty, when you have two teams who run the ball, as often as these two teams do. Do the officials look for that more often than if you have a... holding, St. John, we'll second that. I think the officials will let it go if it's inside the uh, shoulders. Anything outside the shoulders on the outside, they have to call. So the Redmond right now facing a second down and 15. Sean Sharkey backing out signals. With time, throwing up the middle, short to Russo. Russo won't get much, maybe to the 35. Ball was loose, but St. John's recovers. Well, lucky break for St. John's, that ball bouncing back to Russo. They don't use him much as a receiver, but last week he caught a 67-yard touchdown. Well, this is how terrible there he is. He can use him on a screen. Watch him take a pop right here, turns around, has the awareness to fall on the fumble, though. There it is, it's stripped from him, picks it up. Could have been a big break for Maris' defense. Back up linebacker Ron Brown, number 58, causing the fumble there. The junior. So it's third and nine. They're blitzing again. Sharkey running out of time. Throws short. A diving attempt near the first down marker for Iadivio. They're going to rule it a completion. It's very close to the first down, but he may be inches short, Marty. Well, the one thing Iadivio did, he came back. He had the awareness. He saw Sharkey was in trouble. Came back, made the reception. It's going to be very close to that first down. Down. Fourth reception for Idevio. Many of them have been very short catches. And from where we're sitting, Barry, I would call it fourth and one. Now, Idevio last year led him in receptions with 47. 
at average 15.4. Not a major factor this year. He's been bothered by a knee problem. They are going to be short. And about, uh, what, six inches, Marty? Big six inches. And there's a big decision by Bob Ricca. Does he go for it? Does he punt? He has to realize one thing. If they don't pick up the first down, Marist has excellent field position. He's going to go for it. That's the call right here by Bob Ricca. Brian Moynihan, number 80, comes in with a play from the sideline. It's inches to go, and they figure we've got Russo, one of the best around. We've got Sharkey, maybe to just go on the quarterback sneak. What do you look for, Mark? But also look for that dummy count. Look for the hard count by Sharkey, trying to get the defensive line to jump off sides. All right, here we go. Ten-man front up there. Sharkey trying to edge his way out, still trying to fight for the yardage. Shove back, but let's see if they mark his forward progress. Well, all depends where they mark it, but from the outside official, it looks like it's going to be very close. McCann trying to close the hole. Number 76, the big tackle, an emotional leader. And I think he may have it from the spot, but he may bring the chains in again. The nose of that football between the 43 and 44 yard line. It is going to be very close. They didn't make much on that play. Well, if they make it, it's by the hair on your chinny chin chin, <laughs> as Bob Richter would say. It's not going to be decisive. It's just going to be barely made it. And they didn't, they did pick it up. By the length of the football, by the chinny chin chin of the chain. And the Redmen gambling on fourth down. Keep the drive alive. They trail, in case you're just tuning in, 13 to 12. Sean Sharkey has thrown a couple of touchdown passes, one to Anitra, one to McPherson. Matt McDonald with a one-yard run, and Don Phelan with a 27-yard end-around run for the Maris scores. Sharkey, the single setback, four receivers. And Sharkey gets the call, or rather Russo gets the call, and Russo will cross the 45 to the 47-yard line. A pickup of a round three, where he was stacked up by Jeff Sacramento. And we ought to give some credit to that offensive line. Number 58, Frank Lucasio, just did an excellent job on the nose. Bob Rickham's worried. He hasn't seen the 5-2 all year. And right there, just Frank Lucasio opens up the hole, picks up five yards for Russo. 16th carry for 105 yards, three times against Marist. He's gone over the 100-yard mark in the four years he's played against him. Toronto now in his fullback. For Russo, they work out of the eye. Second and six. Russo following Toronto. Nowhere to go. They got penetration in the backfield, and he was snowed under. And making the plays there, number 57, Roger Hancock, the outside linebacker, and Joe Jarjura, and Jeremy Thode, number 39. Well, right there, Russo has nowhere to run. He's got to make the decision whether he's going to take it up hard or take it outside. Right there, watch number 39. Jerome Throat, he comes in, but what's the swarming defense right there? One, two, three, gang tackling. That's what's going to take the seam out of number 21, Anthony Rizzo, when you have nine headgears hitting you all at once. Third and nine, Redmond in a passing situation here. They come with a blitz, they go inside, a fake now, Sharkey throwing incomplete out of the backfield looking for Art Costello, and he could not hang on for fullback who has not caught any passes this year. Surprising call. And it goes incomplete as he couldn't hang on and the Redmond will be forced to punt. Well, that'll go as an incompletion for Sharkey. Well, right there, that pass has to be caught. Number 39, uh, Costello, he's wide open in the flat, so he hits him in the hands, and they always say if the ball hits you in the hands, you have to make the catch. Harris is deep to receive the kick of Parker. Harris standing back at around the 20. Joe Parker stepping forward. High kick, doesn't go very far. Will sail to the near sideline and die. A very poor kick, about 18 yards unofficially. And they'll get the ball around the 40-yard line. Maris leading by a point with 8.44 to go in this third quarter. And Parker right there just shanked it off the side of his leg. A very poor kick. Now bring Maris out with excellent field position at their own 40-yard line. Down on the field standing by our main man, Carl Wood. All right, Barry, thank Thanks very much. Number 71, Steve Dombrowski. The doctors, the trainers looked at him. Apparently, they died. They were diagnosed that strained tendons. They told him it would be sore. They have retaped him. They said he could go back into action. We'll have to see. He's having trouble putting pressure on that right foot, an ankle that he's had problems with in the past. All right, Carl Young Lee, number 50, has replaced him. McGru uh, throwing McCourt deep down the sideline. Failing is beating the defense. 
and it's down at the 11-yard line. Coach Dixon was back there defending, but Phelan got two steps behind, and Mark Bernardini was also there, but he had beaten both of them. And that's the first thing that we saw Kurt Dixon do wrong tonight. He let an offensive player get behind him for a big 46 46 yard reception. Watch McCord, he throws back there as we're watching it. Doesn't look like there's a receiver, but there he is, number 81. Oh, Phelan right there to make the reception. So it's first and 10 at the 12 yard line. They have come up with some big plays, a 63 yard pass. And that one for about 43 yards. Here trying to turn it outside Dayuro. Got by one man. And as he got to around the 10-yard line, brought down by Ken Forte, who came up from the cornerback spot. So it'll set up a second down at about seven. They can get a first down at around the three-yard line as the clock is moving, Marty, with under eight minutes to go in this third quarter. And we saw in the first half that both teams came up with the big play. Right there, Maris comes up with the biggest play of the third quarter. Cassio will line up as a wide receiver to the right. Phelan, who has had some big catches to the left. Working out of the eye, McDonald and Dayuto, the running backs. McCourt looking, throwing to the corner. He's got a man wide open in the corner, and it is going to be incomplete. It was Cassio on the far side in the corner of the end zone. Ditzler hobbling back once again. He was the defender on the play, but Cassio just couldn't reach that ball in the corner of the end zone. And McCourt's got both wide receivers running it down and out. He's got Cassio wide open, and on the other side, he had number 81, Dan Fallon, wide open. Right there, he's got to deliver. Ditzler does a U-turn, he doesn't get to the receiver in time, just poorly thrown ball. Well, Cassio trying to make the reception, big third and eight from the 10-yard line. The court with time, throwing the quick slant paddle, and he's going to be a touchdown to Phelan. Well, we talked about Phelan, his speed, and right there, he's in this match, he's against Dir Dirksler, and if Dirksler is hurt, they're going to have to get Dirksler out of there. So Phelan has been the story tonight. DeForest was putting some pressure on, but give credit to Brian McCourt, the Baldwin native, the Long Island kid, for tossing the touchdown pass, and he drilled it right into Phelan, who this time hung on. And Danny Phelan having quite a ball game. His second touchdown, he's run for one, and he's caught one. Well, Phelan, this was his whole drive. He had that big reception. Right there, comes up with a big touchdown. DeTorio to try the extra point. It is up, and it is good. And the Red Foxes of Marist have opened up a 20-12 lead with 7.27 to go in this third quarter. And Dittler's playing his heart and soul out there, but if the injury is no longer an injury where you're going to go out there and be a hamper to the team, Bob Ricca has got to use better judgment. Get the young man out of there. He had an excellent first half. As you look at Bob Ricca, he's hugging him now. He makes him understand it's not your fault. As we take another look at it, look at McCord. He's going to go back. He knows that Dittler is out there on a man of man coverage on Fallon. He delivers the ball. The only place that somebody can catch it is right there close to the ground. Fallon makes the reception. And right here we'll look at uh, the head coach. He loves that extra point. Well, Parity offensive coordinator likes the call, likes the execution. And his club leads by eight, trying to beat St. John's for the fourth year in a row. He said this is a barometer game. Beating St. John's has given their program, you know, respectability. And Bob Ricca not happy with that last touchdown. Well, as we take another look, let's isolate this time on the coverage guy, number 42, Kurt Ditzler. He comes in there, he's just a step behind, and that's got to be because he's injured. Well, that's the one spot where you can't play injured, where you're one-on-one -on -one there. You maybe can get away with it on the line of scrimmage if you're a tackle and you're, you've got a leg injury, perhaps, but not when you're a secondary man. Not when you're out there on the island, not when you're a man-to-man -man coverage out there on a the wide receiver. You have to be fully healthy because you're going to have to turn, you're going to have to run, and you have to have the ability to recover. Vittorio with the kick to uh, Ayadidio at the 5, to the 15. Almost got tripped up. Great field coverage as he gets maybe to the 20-yard line, and that will be it. A lot of white shirts around that ball. And the Red Foxes fired up as they tackle him at the 20. Tim Crack coming up with the tackle. And St. John's trailing by eight after that last drive. And four plays, 60 yards, set up uh, the good field position after the 18-yard St. John's punt. And Phelan on the 10-yard pass from McCourt. We have a flag on the kickoff. 
But a personal foul after the play was over on a dead ball against the kicking team. First down. That will help St. John's. Give them the ball up at around the 35. Where they'll put it in play, trailing 20 to 12. Give credit to Brian McCourt. You know, he came in, uh, you know, not with a great reputation, but he's led his team on two big drives late in the uh, first half and the closing seconds they scored. Got a nice drive there. And when you look at both quarterbacks, Sean Sharkey for St. John's, he's been off balance, but he's had his moments tonight. Right now he has to regroup, take this offense, get Anthony Russo back involved, try to bounce him outside. Russo, the single setback, Sharkey to throw on first down. Quick out to McPherson, spun away. Has the first down and taken down as he crosses midfield. Roger Hancock, number 57 on the tackle, but McPherson picks up the first down. And right there is just a quick timing pattern. Sharkey goes back, McPherson, he knows when to make the cut, picks it up on a five-yard reception, and then turns it into a 12-yard gain. Well, McPherson, who was their big play guy, had 14 TDs last year, has one tonight. And four on the year. First down at the 49-yard line for St. John's. They've been a big fourth-quarter team all year. Sharkey looking for McPherson again. Diving catch at the 41-yard line. On the coverage was Tim Crack. And that'll pick up about eight yards on the play. Marty, they'll take that on every play. Well, if you have the linebackers key in on number 21, Anthony Rizzo, take advantage of your wide receivers. Throw it down and out. Nobody's going to intercept it. Pick up your eight yards. Now you're in a second and two. Now you can utilize the talents of number 21, Anthony Rizzo. Fifth catch for McPherson. Second and three, let's call it, at the 41-yard line. Sharkey straight ahead, saw an opening, and will get close to the first down. May have it as he got to around the 38-yard line. And this is a controlled drive. Bob Rickon knows that he has to get his offense back out there, get them back in sync, make sure that everybody understands that, hey, we're looking up at the scoreboards, we're eight points behind, but let's start something going. Let's get a little bit of momentum. So he's keeping everything basic for his quarterback. Sharkey, 14 for 29, 107 yards, a couple of touchdowns, and a couple of interceptions. Now the first down at the 39. And off to Russo, slipped the initial tackle, and just dives forward to get a couple of yards on the play. Roger Hancock on the stop, looked like they slowed him up in the backfield, but it's tough for one man to bring him down. He's got such great leg drive, Russo, and he got away and then was finally tackled. Well, the defensive line had excellent penetration, then let number 57, Hancock, come in there and finish him off, but he still picked up three yards. Now, 18 carries, 104 yards for Anthony Russo. And Russo closing in on 4,700 yards. He's right now the third leading rusher in the history of NCAA Division III football. Second and seven for St. John's. Again, Russo the single setback. Sharkey looking for a quick pitch. Has Ayadibio. Ayadibio hit by Harris. Shy of the first down. Picked a very short yardage on the play. Maybe five. It'll set up a big third down play here. And what we're seeing now is number uh, 18, Sean Sharkey, taking advantage of the corners of Maris. They're getting a big cushion. You can't give a, a wide receiver seven yards. Either play him in a bumper run, or if you're going to play that zone, play a stronger zone. Ayadibio, five catches for only 23 yards. So you can see he's been catching all short ones. Third and three for the Redmen with 4.40 to go. Third quarter trailing by eight. Sharkey inside to Russo. He won't go anywhere. Initial penetration. John Saginario, Joe Jarjura getting in real quick on the play. Give the credit to number 32, Saginario. He just comes in there and slams Russo. Right here. Watch number 32. He's going to be key in on number 21, Anthony Russo. Saginario comes in there, delivers a blow, and then there's the teammate. Six more white jerseys on him. Boy, did you see the penetration? Omar Bivens, number 85, had he was in the backfield as well, Marty. So fourth and four and a half. They're going for it here. Sharkey looking, throwing up the middle, throws an interception right into the arms of Mike Woodard, his second interception of the ball game. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to isolate that middle screen, but 
Marist defensive linemen are not falling for it. Sharkey goes back there. There's a big congestion right there in the middle, and he just throws the ball up for a grab. And there's Woodard right there for his second interception. So Malik Woodard comes up with the interception, and we'll watch it here again. Now watch Sharkey. He's looking to set up the middle screen. He doesn't let it develop. He throws it over, and Woodard right there for his second interception, a big turnover. Well, I think he was looking for Toronto, the fullback on that play, but right now Maris leading by eight takes over. They'd like a long drive here. McCord on the option. Fakes the pitch now. Will cut back. Nifty move here. He's slammed down pretty hard and will pick up short yardage as he was hit uh, after picking up some yardage on the play. Walter DeForest and again on the tackle was Kurt Dinsler combining. And McCord right there. He's going to run like a triple option. He fakes into the line of scrimmage. He comes out. He fakes the pitch right here. Now he's looking. Oh, oh, I got the ball. I got to run it. <laughs> and here he goes. And you know a quarterback hates to get a, a hit from a linebacker like the force. He's been all over the field tonight. Second and five for Brian McCourt. Coming back home to Long Island. Baldwin native. Keep it on the ground here. And slammed down by Ray Lambright right that time after a very short pickup was Don Diuto. And if you want to see how to make a tackle, if we get the replay on this, number 79, Brayden Lambright just slams him. Hits him right in the middle of the shoulder pads, and there's nowhere to go. Yeah, Lambright, before, Marty, I know you didn't see him three years ago. Before he got hurt, he was some kind of football player. And ask, and you will receive. Watch this tackle by Lambright right here. Pops him. Nowhere to go but backwards. He was a dominating football player at the line of scrimmage. Third, and let's call it five here. Another big play for the St. John's defense. The court in trouble. Anitra got blocked looking for the big play there. Chased to the near sideline by Bruno. Throws and it's tipped away. Fine defensive play by Ken Forte to knock it away. They got great pressure on the quarterback that time. And it all starts with the pressure, but Ken Forte, number 49, he stays at home. He's not going to come up, not going to try to hit the uh, quarterback. He stays with his receiver and knocks the ball down. Well, Al Bruno leading the charge. There were a couple of other guys that almost got to the court. Ray Lambright was another one. So the punt coming here for A.J. Grant. It'll be his fourth, averaging close to 35 yards. McPherson back to receive the kick. He's the uh, deep man, along with O'Leary. Poor kick by Grant. Line drive kick. O'Leary does not field it, and it'll die at around the 21-yard line. But it was a poor kick. It was low. It was end over end. But when you're 6'5", 270 pounds, it doesn't matter how you kick it. It's still going to go 47 yards. And no return. So that, instead of St. John's getting the ball up, maybe at the 35-yard line, they're now inside the uh, 25 and around the 20 where they'll put it in play first and 10. And there's uh, Bob Ricca. He's telling O'Leary, if you field it, we pick up another 15 yards. That's what you can do. Put your hand up over your head. Wave it. No defenders can hit you. Just catch the ball. O'Leary, one of the many freshmen on St. John's. This was the best recruiting class they've had in a while. Sharkey rolling right, gets a nice block that time. Throws on the run into traffic incomplete. Up and around the 22-yard line as he was trying for Dan Parker. It'll uh, set up a second down and 10 play. Tim Crack uh, on the coverage. And Saginario right there. He's going to hit Sharkey again. He comes off. Sharkey gets an excellent block by Russo. He can't find a receiver. And then he gets hit by the middle linebacker, John Saginario. Now, we told you this Maris team, a hard-hitting defensive unit, one of the better defenses in the country. Last year, they were one of the better ones and do a great job with defensive coordinator Doherty. Under two minutes to go, third quarter, they show blitz again. They drop off. Another block Sharkey gets this time. Throws on the run, deflected, and is it going to be caught? Up and around the 38-yard line, it is Charlie Broadway coming up with a catch on the play. Well, there's Broadway. He's out there. Excellent concentration. It's the same play with a different result. You have a lead blocker in Russo. He cuts the defender down. Sharkey makes an excellent throw. And what a concentration on Broadway. Now Broadway, the senior out of North Babylon, who's played in the shadow of Anthony Russo, coming up with a big first down catch at the 38-yard line. 17-yard pickup. Minute and a half to go, third quarter. Redmond trailing by eight. Sharkey, quick pitch to 
to McPherson. Won't get away from the tackle this time of Timmy Crack, a five-yard gain. Well, those plays are going to work. They're going to pick up five, six yards, and they're looking for a wide receiver to make a big gainer out of a short reception. Right there, uh, McPherson, he picks up six yards, five yards. Now it's second and five. At least they're picking up positive yards. Six catches for McPherson for 59 yards. Came in with just 12 catches on the year. John Sharkey had only 29 completions in the first three games. Under a minute to go as you see the time remaining in the third quarter and Sean Sharkey is going to have to waste the time out here, Marty. Well, John Shar I mean, Sean Sharkey, he knows he doesn't want to make a mistake. They're looking up. They would have had a delay of game. It would have been second and ten. Right there, let's use the timeout. Go over there, talk to Bob Rick. Let's make the proper decision. And the discussion will take place. Bob Baldessani, the offensive coordinator over there, along with Bob Ricker. Dennis Blygen, one of the coaches here, Marty, uh, one of your old teammates, former St. John's star. And speaking about St. John's, of course, another exciting Redmond basketball season is about to start. And there's no better way to follow the team than with a season ticket. The full season package sells for $297. That includes 12 games at Alumni Hall, the Fordham game at the Nassau Coliseum, and six contests at Madison Square Garden. And for more information, you can call 718 990 6211. Hey, how about your old ball club? The Jets playing some pretty good football, going up against Rich Cotite and the Eagles coming up this weekend. And I have friends on both sides, but I was over at the Jet Complex yesterday and uh, was talking to Boomer, and Boomer said that he was a big fan of Sports Channel, told us he watched the game uh, last week, and we just want to say, hey, Boomer, congratulations on being the AFC uh, Player of the Month, and best of luck this weekend against the Eagles. Well, Boomer Esaias, and of course, uh, former star at East Islip High School. St. John's has a great player for there, Steve Diamikas. Right now, Sharkey, little miscommunication. Russo sheds the block and the tackle down the sideline and finally dragged down. Excellent second effort. Tim Crack brought him down, but Anthony Russo with a 15-yard gain. And Russo right there. It's going to be a delayed draw. Sharkey just hands off and the awareness of uh, Russo to break it to the outside to pick up 15 yards. Keep an eye on McPherson. Number 87 gave a nice block on that play, Marty. And watch the handoff. I think Russo goes to the wrong side. He breaks the tackle there, but watch the awareness. He knows he has to get outside. There's a block by McPherson. Picks up 15 yards. So the Redmen on the move here in the closing seconds of this third quarter, trailing by eight. First and ten from the 41. Russo gets the call again. This time we'll get to the 39, and that is it. As he was stopped after a very short gain on the play. Which will probably be the final play of the third quarter, Barry. It should be a very interesting and exciting fourth quarter. Joe McGann on the stop. St. John's, like Hofstra, has been a fourth quarter team, and they'll have to try to do it again. Time out of the field. We head to the fourth quarter. The Red Foxes lead the Redmen 20 to 12. We'll be right back. Seven no hitters, 300 wins, over 5,000 strikeouts, and one. Sean Sharkey barks out the signals. Get some time here rolling, looking deep down the field for McPherson. Way overthrown in the corner there. It looked like he threw that one away, Marty. Setting up a third and uh, nine. Well, right there, it was a uh, down and out, a pump and go. You see Sharkey, he goes back to throw the ball. He pumps. But what happened right there, number six, the corner, Bruce Harris, didn't bite down on that first pump. That's why he stayed with McPherson the whole uh, play. So the Redmen again faced with another big third down play. Idevia will run the play in from the sideline. He and Torado check and little miscommunication by the part of St. John's. They may have too many men out there on the field. They're going to have to waste another time out here, Marty. Well, the one thing Bob Rick uh, can't do is have four running backs out there for one play. Well, you had Torado running in. Broadway was indecisive whether to come off the field. And they're going to have to burn another time out. They're down to one. And that's two timeouts used in less than two minutes. They may regret that toward the end of the game. Yeah, remember on our opening Sports Channel telecast here, they were down to uh, one timeout, and they ended up beating St. Peter's in the closing seconds. Well, you see Bob Ricker talking to Sharky right there. I think he's taking the blame for it, saying that he sent in too many receivers, too many running backs. They didn't have the proper alignment out there. 
Well, remember, Devils Hockey faces off Wednesday when the Devils host the Tampa Bay Lightning at 7.30. That's the Devils and the Lightning, Wednesday at 7.30. The pregame show starts at 7, live and exclusive on Sports Channel. And don't forget, we've got more St. John's football coming your way on Sports Channel. On October the 23rd, we'll be here for Sacred Heart down in Washington to see Georgetown on November 6th and November 25th, Thanksgiving morning. We're going to be here for Stony Brook Party. Three exciting games. We're looking forward to it. If St. John's continue their pattern, we're looking for the final two minutes of this game to be very exciting. That's been their pattern, especially in our Sports Channel telecast over the years. Another big third down play for the Redmen. They've got to pick up nine for the first down. I don't know, folks. Fake two, uh, the big pull, the back going, and it's going to be complete. McPherson, now check that at the 30-yard line. It is uh, Gadis with the catch, and it looks to be enough for the first down. Good play action fake. They went inside on the fake, and Tommy Gadis, the kid out of Woodside, Holy Cross High School, picks up the first down. And watch Sharky. He knows he's going to be hit. Gadis is out there. He goes up there. Excellent hands, excellent concentration. Picks up the first down. A big first down early in the fourth quarter. Eddie Dugan is number two on the tackle, but another big third down play for Sean Sharkey. First and ten from the 30. Russo slips the one tackle, keeps going, look at the leg drive, and down to the 25-yard line after picking up a tough five yards. Malik Woodard and David Caldwell on the tackle. Well, you talk about the late strength of Anthony Russo. Right there, he's hit in the backfield, should have been a loss on the play. Instead, he drives, he keeps his feet moving, picks up five yards. Watch, he gets it, takes a blow right there. His awareness, he keeps the feet moving, and he's always going north and south. When you talk to Bob Ricky, he says Anthony Russo is so effective, if he can keep his shoulders parallel, straight, with the sidelines. Well, we've often seen him really take charge in the fourth quarter. He seems to get stronger as the game goes on. Very durable back. Second and five for the 25. Sharky to throw. Has time. Looking deep for McPherson, and he can't catch up with it. Well, McPherson's wide open, and what, ha what is happening now is Sharky's going back, and he's getting too much air underneath his throws. He's got to deliver a bullet. Now Sharkey was open, and Shar I rather uh, the mi receiver McPherson was open. Sharkey just couldn't get it th to the wide open McPherson. They have former teammates at Valley Stream High School. And now they'll bring a play in from the sideline. John O'Leary has checked in number 84 as a wide receiver, replacing McPherson. Third and five from the 25. Looking for Iadivio, he has the first down inside the 20 at the 18-yard line. Tim Crack on the tackle. And right there, Crack is on man-to-man -man coverage against Iadivio, and he's respecting the speed of Anthony Iadivio. So what he's doing, he's got a big cushion. Iadivio pushes him back, and instead of playing a tight man-to-man, -man, there's a cushion. Iadivio wide open, makes a reception, picks up a first down. Sixth catch for Iadivio. Give credit to Sharkey. He's come up with some big third-down plays here on this drive, Marty. And they've got it first and ten at the 18-yard line. McPherson now back in the ball game as a wide receiver along with Charlie Broadway. Looking to the near side, pumping. He's got McPherson wide open. And there's the difference. That pass right there was right on target. A little bit overthrown, but it was delivered where a defender cannot run underneath it. McPherson is still down in the end zone, but right there, McCourt, he, I mean, uh, Sharkey, he goes back. A beautiful pass. Perfect spiral. Should have been caught. Should have been right there on the money. Second one that McPherson didn't come up with in the end zone. But what's the difference here? There's no air underneath the ball. He pumps, he delivers, and it comes right off McPherson's fingertips. McPherson stretching out with that left hand. So now we go to the 12th play of this drive on second down at 10 from the 18. Let's see if they come back for that same play. Sharkey quick out to the sideline to Ayadivio. Cracks got him wrapped up after about a five-yard pickup. And Ayadivio is out there with that cushion. When you have a guy that has the hands and the ability, just get him the ball. Pick up some positive yard. Now it's a third and five situation and a must pickup. You were in a two-down situation. Bob Rickett, don't look for him to kick a field goal. Look for him to go for a uh, touchdown and a first down. McPherson has checked in with a play from the sideline. He'll line up wide to the left. 
And he'll line up against Harris, single coverage. Russo, the setback behind the quarterback. Sean Sharkey on third and five. He's looking for McPherson. He had double coverage that time as Dorgain is the safety had come up to play along with Harris. And will set up a fourth and five from the 14. What do you think? Are they going to go Well, this field? is a big decision for uh, Bob Ricker. He's looking out there. He's looking at Sharkey. They haven't made up their mind yet. But when you look up there, you realize you're eight points behind even a touchdown right here then you'd have to make the two-point conversion well the has kicked a couple of field goals they're going to go for it here on fourth and five idevio wide to the right broadway and mcpherson to the left crowd starting to come alive here redmond field sharkey flushed out of the pocket will throw he's got a man in the end zone and it's a touchdown charlie broadway no he dropped it he dropped it he had it and dropped it crowd cheering here they thought he had it but he dropped the football charlie broadway had it and sharky did everything right there on that play he scrambles he sets his feet he throws it to broadway hits him right in the bread basket and he drops it that that right there will go down as another incompletion, but it's not Sharkey's fault. Watch Sharkey. He avoids the screen. Uh, I mean the sack right here. He sets. Watch where this ball hits Broadway. Right in the bread basket and ah uh, comes out of his hand. He can't find the handle. Mm. Maris takes over. First and ten at the 13-yard line. The Redmond defense has to do the job right here. And stop Maris. They lead 20 to 12. And Maris will stay on the ground. McDonald stopped as he got maybe a yard on the play to about the 14-yard line. So it'll be second down at nine. Clock ticking, 11.54 to go, and that has to be a, a frustrating drive for the Redmen. They got big plays on third down in every one of those plays, and looked like they were going to get the touchdown there. Well, very frustrating because they consumed time. They picked up a lot of yardage, but when they look up, there's no points on the board. 14-play drive that resulted in no points. Now it's second and eight. McDonald, the fullback. McCourt to throw, throwing for the near sideline for Phelan. Phelan with a diving catch at the 40-yard line, and they rule it complete. St. George arguing that he was out of bounds. Bob Rick emphatically arguing, but Kurt Ditzler was the man on the coverage. It'll go for a 25-yard reception. Well, right there, McCourt goes back. He has time. First time all day. He's getting a little bit of protection. He throws it, and there's Phelan wide open. Right here, we'll see him come down with the ball and watch St. John's coaches. They don't like it, but it's a perfect call. The official's right on top of it. Of course, you only need one foot in college football to be in bounds. And as you know, Marty, of course, throws the ball, you need two. McCourt throwing to the near sideline. Picks the looking for his third interception, but he intercepted it. They ruined he caught it in bounds. So Kirk Ditzler, that was a, a very controversial call. He's popped by his teammates. They picked on him again, and he's come up with his third interception. So this kid's a tough kid. They were going again for the bomb against him, and he picked it off. But watch Ditzler right back there. The ball has a lot of air underneath the heat catches it and we're looking and it does look like he brings down one foot beautiful play that left foot looked like it came in uh, inbounds there detorio number 20 was the intended receiver on the play and the redmen get the ball back but much deeper in their territory at the 30 yard well like i said earlier if this young man kurt ditzler is going to play like this every game that's his third interception bob ricker should hope he has shin splint <laughs> he's had four interceptions on sports channels telecast First and ten for the 30 for St. John. Here's the reverse. Coming and now the flea flicker back to Sharkey. He throws back to Russo. Russo at the 30 down the sideline. Gets a couple of blocks and is down and around the 49-yard line by Eddie Duganis. How about that one, Mark? Well, how about that, Barry? I'm glad you followed that whole play. Now we're going to take another look at it. It started off with a handoff. It went to a reverse. Then it went to a pitchback. And number 21, he gets the ball and he picks up a first down. Follow the coin here. Follow the ball. There's Russo. He hands it off to McPherson. He pitches it back to Sharkey. Sharkey throws it back over to Russo. And Russo picks up a first down. Got a nice block that time from Broadway. That helps bring a 19-yard pickup. And the Redmond up near midfield. And the clock stopped 
momentarily by the officials. I'd like to see how that play is drawn up. There. It's lines <laughs> everywhere, but it worked. Schoolyard kind of play, eh, Marty? It's one of these plays, you go here, I'll go here, I'll throw back to you, but you pick up a first down. But the bottom line is they got it to the final guy. It was number 21 handling the ball. That's the guy you want handling the football. Sharkey, quick pitch, wide open, Parker, first down and more. Parker shoved down as he got to the 31-yard line, about a 20-yard pickup. Roger Hancock stopping him. Boy, Parker has got great hands, Marty. He's caught everything thrown his way. That's his fourth catch of the And Mayor's defense just fell asleep because Parker comes wide open off the line of scrimmage. You can't leave a target like that. Sharkey delivers the ball. There's Parker. First thing he does, he puts the ball away, picks up another first down. Now they got this drive. Last drive, they had it for 14 plays, no points. Now they got to get something out of this one. First and ten at the 32-yard line. Again, single setback. Sharkey barking out signals. Throwing for the sideline, Ayadivio. Diving attempt incomplete. Coverage again was uh, provided by Tim Crack, the cornerback on that left side. Well, the one thing you have to like is the play selection here. Sharkey's going back. He's he's utilizing his wide receivers. He's throwing the short patterns. He's throwing the long pattern. And he's always keeping Russo involved in the offense. Sharkey now 21 for 4. 44, but only 184 yards on those 21 completions. Three interceptions and two touchdowns. And also quite a few drops. Let's give, yeah. uh, you know, it's not Sharkey's uh, fault that he's going down as an incompletion. His receivers have to make those receptions. Good point. Fakes looking for the play action deep for McPherson. He's out there. Diving catch. Touchdown. 32-yard reception, and the man he beat, Bruce Harris, on the play. Well, Sharkey just had an excellent throw there, but he knows he's going to get hit by Chris Beatty, and he comes in, delivers the blow. Sharkey's just a tough kid. He stays back there. And what can you say about McPherson? He's getting wide open. He's getting behind the defenders, and an excellent reception. Well, he dropped the one earlier. He atones for it with a big catch here. The Redmond trailing by two. We'll go for the two-point conversion here. It's 20 to 18. McPherson, who had two touchdown passes tonight, had two last week. And right now, the Redmond trying to tie the ball game here with a two-point conversion. Russo looking for an option pass. Throwing for Adivio. He dives and incomplete. They rule it out of bounds. So the score remains 20 to 18, but Anthony Russo not only catching the ball, but that time throwing the football. And the one thing, that whole drive was exciting. They had a little razzle-dazzle. Sharkey came out, found McPherson, and right there, the two-point conversion. You got a little razzle-dazzle with Anthony Russo throwing the ball. Well, if you'll recall, our opening game, it was a one-point St. John's victory. And now they trail by two. Let's look at that last touchdown. And watch Sharkey. He goes back a perfect throw, though. He's going to go back. He knows he's going to get hit. He pumps. There's McPherson. There's a lot of air underneath the ball. Give McPherson a time to run. Diving catch for a touchdown. Okay, now we'll take a look at Russo trying to throw the ball. He's going to tuck it down, make it look like the run, hope the defenders come up. And he's looking for uh, Ayadivio, just a little bit overthrown. And as we can see the reaction of Bob Ricca. There it is. You can tell by the, his expression on his face. Uh, no. <laughs> Great effort by Ayadivio diving. Made the catch, but they ruled that he was out of bounds over the end line. But exciting plays there. You saw McPherson stretch out, lay out for that uh, ball on the touchdown, and Redmond showing a lot of life here. They're a fourth quarter ball club, an exciting And we saw play. how fast that they could score. Now, Sean Sharkey with his third touchdown pass, second week in a row that he's had three touchdown passes. McPherson having another fine game, seven catches, 91 yards. Last week he had six catches for 107 yards and two touchdowns. So here's Ledworth to kick off. And Wise will be deep along with uh, Dayudo standing back around the five-yard line. Well, these two teams play very exciting close football games, Marty. The last four years, they've all been tight. Dayudo will watch this one sail out of bounds, so they'll re-kick it five yards further back. 
Let's go back and take one more look at this uh, diving catch by McPherson. Watch when he leaves his feet. He's going to extend himself a good two to three yards. Concentration back there. Big time catch. Now McPherson coming up with a great catch as he capped that uh, drive. He's caught 12 and 32 yard touchdown passes tonight. They're going to take the ball at the 35 yard line, which is their option. Uh, with that ball going out of bounds. And Brian McCourt has done a good job late in this ball game, taking over right now. Well, the last drive, four plays, 70 yards, set up by Vitzel's third interception. And McPherson's 32 yard catch of the Sharky uh, touchdown pass to make it 20 to 18. Now Phelan coming in motion. The court to Diudo. Gets a block from McDonald. Breaks into the secondary. He could go. Gets another block. Let's see if they can catch him. And each are chasing him, but they're not going to catch up with Diudo. Boy, he turned it on for 65 yards. And you talk about some speed right there. Excellent block. It starts with Matt McDonald. He gets the first block. And Diudo is all the way gone. A flag, however, on the play down at around the 10-yard line, Marty. Let's see if it's a, a flip or an illegal block. They may call that one back. But you saw the speed of Diudo. Anitra Jess couldn't close on him. This kid, the four-year starter, all-time leading Russia with 4-6 speed. He's got well over 3,000 yards in his career, this kid from Rome, New York. The thing they like about him, Marty, is a great vision. We talked about why they like him as a running back, and uh, he showed not only vision, but speed on that. Well, when you have a blocker like McDonald, we talked about it earlier, McDonald's a strong, punishing blocker. And a lot of times earlier, as we looked at Diudo, a lot of times he made the wrong decision. Official still not uh, making the call. Let's watch that. One. Watch number 33. This time he has an excellent block. And watch Diudo. He goes inside, and now he keeps cutting back inside. As we see, uh, he's going to utilize his speed, his size. He get, breaks into, but there's a penalty on the play. It's, it's uh, unnecessary roughness on Maris, but they're going to take it from the point where it occurred on the field. Uh, they're still talking it over. They have put the score up on the board, so it is apparently against St. John, the unnecessary roughness. Uh, let's see what they're going to do now. We'll talk it over here, continue talk. The touchdown has been put up on the board here, but... Well, I think it's going to be quickly erased because they're already talking to the defenders St. of St. John's. John's. Marist already knows that uh, it's been signaled against them. It's just where are they going to put the infraction from? Now, Dottorio, the barefoot kicker, is out there right now, number 20. And whoever made that mistake, that's a, a very crucial mistake right there. You have a running back that with the effort, he's in for a touchdown. You have somebody out there that does a, a very, what he calls an innocent block, and he gets caught, whether it's a cheap shot or not. That's unnecessary in this game. That could be the turning point in the ball game right now, because uh, had they gone up, they would have been 26 to 18 going for the extra point. And if St. John's could hold him to just a field goal here, it's 23-18. <laughs> Let's get the final verdict here. The ball moved back. We had a personal foul against Marist after the touchdown. They elected to take the penalty on the try. So we moved back 15 yards. We also had a personal foul against St. John's after the touchdown. They, uh, Marist elected to take it half the distance. So, the <laughs> touchdown counts, as we said, because it was a dead ball. The foul occurred after the touchdown was made. Well, the, the, uh, the referee right there, he had everything. Uh, he was pointing to Maris, calling them St. John's. St. John's was Maris. <laughs> what we have here the is the extra point by Dottorio. The, touch, the touchdown is going to count. They're going to take it back for the extra point. 16 yards. That's really a 26-yard extra point attempt, and it is good. And with exactly 10 minutes to go, Jim Parity running up the sidelines. His uh, Red Foxes have opened up a nine-point lead thanks to the beautiful 65-yard run by Don Diudo. And all that color and commentating there for, by us, very for not. 
You know, all they had to do was signal the touchdown was good. We're trying to make excuses. <laughs> we didn't know what was going on. Well, Marty Lyons, my erstwhile colleague, along with Carl Water. Where is Carl Water? We haven't heard from Carl. Well, the last time I saw Carl, he was buying a hot dog and a can of cocoa. <laughs> Hope you're enjoying the action here on Sports Channel Thursday Night Football. We'll be on the air Saturday at 1 from Hofstra. Hope you'll join us again. And we'll watch Jim Parity react to the extra point by Dettorio. Well, the kick is up. It's it's back 10 yards. It's up. Got plenty of leg in it. And Parity over here, he's going to let us know how excited he is. He's looking, he's looking, and look at the reaction on his face compared to Bob Rick. He knows his team's up by nine points. That's two scores that St. John needs. Well, it's funny how certain teams do well against the other teams. Maris appears to have St. John's number, and St. John's, of course, over the years has Iona's number. Iona hasn't beaten St. John's in ten years. They've come close. What's the name of that mascot over there, Warren? Carl. <laughs> Carl Warren. That's Carl Warren. <laughs> you know, Carl's, you found it. Carl's a graduate from St. John, so I know that, the, you know, the more you can do, the better, Carl. All right, this one will come down to the 20-yard line, taken by Anitra. Anitra bullying his way across the 30 to around the 35-yard line, brought down by Tim Crack, who's been a very busy guy today in the secondary, as well as on special teams. There's Diudo. Remember, he went out for a couple of plays. Another guy capable of breaking one. We talked about how important this game was to him, the rivalry with Anthony Russo. Of course, doesn't get the publicity that Russo gets, but with that long run now with 103 yards on the evening. And two very talented running backs that are very valuable to their offense. And right now, it's time for uh, Sharky to get his offense going with less than 10 minutes to play. Still a lot of time left. St. John's has moved the ball very well, Marty, the last two possessions. One possession, they died on the 15-yard line. Sharkey with time, looking for McPherson. Throws right into the arms of Bruce Harris at the fifth pickoff. Harris down the near sideline, driven out of bounds after the interception. And right there, Sharkey, he has uh, McPherson wide open. He underthrows him, and there's uh, an excellent pick by Harris. He's going to play a man for man. He throws into double coverage. He's getting a little bit of help from the strong safety. Comes up with a big pick. And look at the field position Marist has. Well, Harris with his second second interception of the year. Watch Sharkey, it's going to be underthrown. Here comes Harris. You see McPherson, he's out there. He's wide open. And Harris comes up with a big pick of tonight. Well, two years ago, Harris returned one for 97 yards against St. John's for a school record. And that was right here on this field. So he has performed well. Fourth turnover, all interceptions thrown by Sean Sharkey. Ryan McCourt with his club leading by nine. Stays on the ground by Udo. Looking to turn it outside. Out of bounds. He's shoved out of bounds on the far side by Ken Forte. But another big pickup for Di Udo. And uh, St. John's in trouble right now. Trailing 27-18. 19-yard pickup for that young man. 5'7", 175. And playing an outstanding game here in the second half. And when Di Udo breaks that line of scrimmage, and he can use that vision, he knows where he's going to go. He's going to try to get to the sidelines and take it up with speed, quickness. He can do that. Last year, he missed the preseason, was hampered by a hamstring injury. Didn't have a great year last year, but has played well this year. The court again given it to Diodo. This time will go nowhere. Stood up, and right in the middle of things, Chris Carew, number 46, driving it back. And it'll be uh, maybe a loss on the play. We'll see where they spot the ball. No gain on the play. Clock ticking. Redmond really have to stop him here and hope that uh, they can't even get a field goal out of this drive. Uh, another three points here would uh, make it a 12, but they're going to need two touchdowns. Well, the one thing St. John's has to do, they have to be very patient, too. They don't want to let their frustration, they don't want to take an unnecessary roughness, they don't want to take a, a penalty. They have to be patient, they have to play smart football right now. The court to throw, looking past too low. Phelan, the intended receiver, down at the 10-yard line. That'll stop the clock with 8.52 to go. And make third and ten. Andy Phelan, who's played a key part of this game, and Brian McCourt, the communications major, has shown a lot of leadership in this game. Didn't do much in the first half, just that one reception, Marty, until the last uh, minute of the first half, and then he came alive. He's played well since then. Well, the one thing McCourt's doing, he's showing that senior leadership. He's in the huddle. He's not, he hasn't lost his poise. He's been in there the whole game. Whether it's been up or down for him, he's still taking control of that offense. They'll try Diudo again. 
Ayuto shy of the first down, right up the middle, setting up a good field goal position should they want to go here. The ball at the 15-yard line. Chris Carew on the stop. And uh, the young man who we just saw kick a 25-yard extra point, Chris DeTorio, will be coming in. He's four for six in field goals. We've got another player warming up on the sidelines for St. John's. That is Tom Klein, the backup quarterback. 32-yard field goal attempt. The ball up. DeTorio's kick will sail over the goal post. And the Redmen now trail by a total of 12, 30 to 18. And that's a big uh, three points there because now it makes St. John has to score two touchdowns instead of one touchdown and a field goal. So they take advantage of the turnover, and St. John's pays with three points. Let's see if Tom Klein will be checking into the ball game for Sharkey, who was warming up moments ago. And as we watch the kick, he gets a lot of left on the ball right there. You know, uh, Anitra, Anitra's got to watch it, because that could be a 15 yards though, and force it on the kickoff if it's called. Especially a 33-yard kick for DeTorio, who's now 5 for 7. And the Redmen are going to have to pull, uh, pull this one out with... 8.14 to go, go right. down 12. Two it right. You know, it doesn't really make much difference. As they'll get the ball. Marist, yeah, the club that uh, has been impressive. They beat St. Francis in their opening ball game, beat a weak pace team, lost to a good CW Post team last week. And boy, that Klein kid had quite a day, 409 yards last week. A lot of the pro scouts interested in that CW Post quarterback. They said he was throwing the outs, he was throwing the ups. Great arm, great leadership, and uh, Perry Klein doing it all last week. Sports Illustrated did a nice feature on him. Threw for 409 yards. And Tom Marshall, who has that pro passing game at CW Post, very pleased to have this kid who came from California. He was a former University of California player, wasn't getting any playing time. Gary Wishard, former CW Post star, big uh, agent, got him under his wing and said, why don't you go back east? Well, let's play. not use that term. Gary Wishard, a very good alumni of Post, <laughs> and uh, took advantage of a guy that had talent, wanted to see his uh, alumni do well. And wanted a kid who wanted to get some playing time. Idevio's got the wall to the near side. Gets a couple of blocks, 30, still going, 35, driven out of bounds at the 37-yard line again by Tim Crack. So good field position for the Redmen, but they've got to score quickly with 8.06 to go, trailing by 12. Didn't take long for them to score in that last drive. The 33-yard field goal, four plays, some 40 yards, and a minute and 30 seconds. Of course, set up uh, by the interception. And St. John's finds themselves down by 12. And with Tommy Klein warming up on the sidelines earlier, if Sharkey is not productive in this offensive drive, don't be surprised if Bob Ricker makes a move at that quarterback position. Klein is a freshman who's got a lot of poise out of uh, Cary High School at Franklin Square. A lot of potential. He uh, was in last week against Siena. And there's a look at Sean Sharkey hoping to pull off a big comeback here. He's 22 for 46. 216 yards, four interceptions. That last one hurt. And two touchdowns. Make that uh, yep, three touchdowns tonight. Anitra has caught one and McPherson has caught two. Sharkey deep drop. Now scrambling. Looking. Has a man open, O'Leary diving, can't come up with it at the 47-yard line. And that's what Bob Ricker, there's a flag on the play, but Bob Ricker wants Sharkey to make a decision earlier than that. Right there, Sean Sharkey, he's scrambling around, he's keeping his feet moving, he's got the, a great awareness, but instead of throwing an incompletion to number 84, O'Leary, you have an offensive lineman down the field, pick up some positive yards, you have plenty of running room, run it, pick up five, do the hook slide, put us in a situation where we're not beating ourselves. 7.58 to go. Bob Ricker's club down 12. McPherson has checked into the lineup. There's Dutch Outerkirk in our picture there. Great guy. And Dutch gives a lot of credit to Bill Hampton from the New York. receiver downfield. St. John's. Still first down. As we look at Dutch right there, he gives a lot of credit to Bill Hampton, the equipment manager for the Jets. He said, I learned the trade from Billy. Well, he's equipment man here, but he was a great coach in his own right, Dutch. Coached high school, coached at Temple, and uh, used to help Bob Ricker, still does, on the sideline. Sharkey in trouble, scrambling, faking, 
avoids the tackle, but will be taken down here at the 37-yard line. Loose ball picked up, but I think the whistle blew as the Red Foxes' uh, Jeremy Thode, who's played a fine game, picked that up and was headed to the end zone, but the whistle has blown the ball dead. And Maris secondary just had an excellent coverage right there. Sharkey had nobody to throw, throw to, but he, what he did there, the awareness, he picked up three yards. He's not going to force a mistake. Well, give credit to, Jer uh, to the quarterback and to Jeremy Thode. The quarterback, Brian McCourt, has done a fine job of leadership. Doesn't have impressive passing numbers, but he's led his club to a 12-point lead right here. Sharkey on second down. Quick pitch. Parker, he has been outstanding. Has the first down inside the 45 at the 44-yard line. And they're going with their hurry-up offense. They're going to try to catch Marist right now out of position. You see Sharkey, they've got to play cool. Ball put in play. Now we hit the seven-minute mark. St. John's with time. Sharkey rolling right, throwing on the run. Complete on the far side to Gadis. It'll be a pickup of around seven on the play. And the third catch for Tommy Gadis. And Gadis is out there close to the first down marker. They're going to move it. They're keeping the drive. you got to like what Sharkey's doing now. You know, Sharkey's been in on, on an emotional high and low. He's had good points. He's had bad points. But the one thing Bob Ricca has to believe in, he's a leader in that huddle. He feels bad for those interceptions, but if there's anybody that can bring the St. John teams back, it's uh, Sharky right now. Well, he uh, throws better on the run, a lot of people feel, than staying in the pocket. First and 10 at the 34-yard line. Again, St. John's moving the ball. Sharky looking deep for McPherson against Harris, and Harris closest to the ball as it goes incomplete, setting up a second and 10. Well, right there, Harris is just playing deep. He knows he doesn't want to give up the touchdown. There's no fake involved. There's no pump. you got McPherson. He's going to run a, a deep streak. But Harris is just back there. It looked like the ball was almost thrown to Harris. Harris was a step away. McPherson was four steps away. Yeah, Harris, the guy who plays the best receiver, the real fine athlete. Kid out of Philadelphia. And he has been tested tonight. Now Ayadidio will go wide to the right. McPherson wide to the left at the bottom of your screen. On second and ten, Sharkey looking for McPherson. Makes the diving catch. About a six-yard pickup. Harris watching on the coverage. And here comes that hurry-up offense again. Anytime that they get a quick reception in, they're going to try to catch Marist out of place and out -manned. Now Gadis has checked into the ball game. Third and about three. Sharkey looking for the sideline. Has McPherson for the first down at the 20-yard line. And that will stop the clock with 6.23 to go. And remember early in the game, Barry, on the first, uh, first quarter, we saw McPherson over there talking to Sharkey on the sideline. That's a relationship. You've got your receivers over there. They're communicating. A lot of times tonight, it's not Sharkey. It's the receivers. The lack of concentration, the drop passes. But right now, they've got to get some points out of this drive, and then they've got to come back and defensively hold Maris from scoring. First and 10 at the 20. 6.23 to go. Fourth quarter. St. John's trailing by 12. Here's uh, dancing Mr. Russo. Russo, first down inside the 10 and around the 7 yard line. About a 12 yard pickup. Brought down by Joe McGann. It's a goal to go situation. And again, St. John's without a huddle here. Russo picking up the first down. And Russo picks up the first down. He picks up a big 13 yards, but give a lot of credit to Joe McGann, number 76. A defensive lineman down there hustling, playing off a lot of emotion right Shockey now. Shockey looking for the touchdown to Ayadivio. He slipped as he went for that ball on the far side. Crack was covering. It'll be second and goal. And you see what Ayadivio is doing to Crack over there. He's pushing him into the end zone. Turns around. He doesn't have the footing. The ball right there in completion. Sean Sharkey throwing a lot of passes. The school record set by Scott Sesney, 59. What a great quarterback he was. Teamed up with Dennis McDermott. 53 passes thrown by Sharkey so far. A lot of time left too. 6.05 to go. He could break that record. Second and goal from the eight. 
Shockey looking for McPherson, can't find him. He, he's got Russo open, throws for the end zone, touchdown! McPherson came all the way across the field from the left corner and was spotted open in the end zone for his third touchdown catch of the evening. And you talk about a guy that has confidence in his receiver. He's looking for McPherson the whole way. He scrambles, he bites time, he finds McPherson in the back of the end zone and brings his team right back in the game with a little under six minutes to play. Now McPherson, who had a big game against Maris last year, brings the Redmen within six here, 30 to 24. And St. John's appears to be going for two here. Now let's see if they make a change. Yep. No, they're going to try the extra point, the single point. The amicus is in. This would make it a five-point ball game. The amicus kick is up, and it is good. And don't go away, folks. 5.57 to go. The Redmen, who on their last three possessions, except for the interception, have moved the ball at will. Now down by five. Up to the defense to try to come up with the football with a lot of time left. A lot of time. Now it's a lot of pressure on your defense. Last couple series, the Marist offense has been very strong. They've been running through that defense. As we take another look at it, watch Sharky. He's going to go back. He's going to show some poise. He's going to show a little bit of confidence in himself. He's looking for McPherson the whole way. Avoids the rush. Sets himself now. You see Russo, he's wide open, but he's looking for McPherson. He's running the baseline right there. Picks up a touchdown. Smart play by the receiver. He followed the quarterback across, and finally he was spotted open. And Jim Parity said, hey, we got to stay with that guy. He's their bread and butter guy. We've got to get the coverage on him. Well, you got to, if it's not if it's not broken, don't fix it. Right there, that's been working all day. The Sharky to McPherson uh, connection. Well, St. John's, we mentioned a big fourth quarter team, Marty. They've scored 49 points in the fourth quarter compared to only six in the first quarter. They've got two TDs here, and they'll need another one to try to pull this out. Well, as Coach Bryant used to say in college at the University of Alabama, the team that wins the fourth quarter is usually the team that will win the game. Yeah, a lot depends on conditioning. Sharkey with 32 completions tonight. And right now, Ledwith to kick off. End over end kick. Diudo takes it at the 12. Diudo runs into a guy, stays on his feet, swarmed under at the 30-yard line and brought down finally. Fired up Redmond on the specialty teams. Here's another look at the touchdown pass. Sharkey to McPherson. Well, we don't see McPherson, but he's running right alongside of the quarterback, but he's in the end zone. He slides down, picks up his third touchdown of the afternoon. Harris had good coverage on him initially, but then Harris seemed to disappear from the from the play, Marty, on the replay. Well, what happened there, uh, Harris had him in the corner yep. as we take a look at McPherson on the sideline. Just a tremendous uh, afternoon for him, tremendous evening, rather. All right, here we go. McCourt parking out signal, sends Phelan in motion. Working out of the eye. Fumble, loose ball. And it appears that St. John's thinks they have it. And they do. They come up with the football, and the Redmen take over first and ten. Coming up with it, Walt DeForest, the middle linebacker, has been in the middle of everything tonight. The first fumble that they have had, and St. John's takes over. Well, DeForest is right there in the middle. He sees there's, there's a poor, it's a poor snap, poor uh, snap by uh, Kerr. Never had the ball. Here comes number 47 in there to pick it up. And the Redmen with 5.44 to go, first and 10 at the 30-yard line, trailing 30 to 25. How quick this game can change, Barry. Another turnover. Redmen crowd alive right now. They can sense the Redmen pulling it out, perhaps. Sharkey chased, in trouble, avoids the sack, but now runs into the arms of big number 75, Jeff Sacramento. It'll be a huge loss of about 15 yards on the play. And that's what you're talking about, Sharkey, right there. Do not take as they mark it off. That's a 12-yard loss. You've got Sacramento all over. You throw the ball. You see your receivers aren't going to be open. Throw it out of bounds. Don't take an opportunity to put your team in a second and 22. Third sack by Sacamano. Right, keep an eye on Sharkey. Perhaps that left him. He's been battered and bruised and really 
hit hard tonight on many occasions. The ball at the 41-yard line. Sharkey looking, McPherson wide open! First down at the 16-yard line. A flag on the play, Harris and Woodard combined to stop him. But at the end of the play, another flag could be a face mask. And McPherson's gonna run a post pattern. He's wind up, uh, lined up outside, he does the post. Sharkey finds him, picks up 23 yards, 24 yards. It's a first down, but there's a flag on the play. Now it would have to be a defensive penalty there. Face mask, I believe. It's five yard penalty. First down. It's a post pattern. We're going to take another look at look at Sharkey. He goes back. He finds McPherson wide open. McPherson goes for 24, and there's the face mask coming in late by uh, number six, Harris. Well, McPherson coming up big. Ten catches, 130 yards, three touchdowns. 4.37 to go. The Redmen trailing by five. First and ten from the 13. Caruso. And as he got to around the 11, about a three-yard pickup. Stopped by Sacramento and Thode. It'll be a second down play. And as time runs down, almost to the four minute Barry, we have to realize that they're five points behind. They need a touchdown, and they're running out of field. Gadis has checked into the lineup, bringing a play in from the sideline. Second and eight as Iadivio will line up wide to the right. McPherson against Harris, wide to the left at the bottom of your screen. Russo slips. Tough break for the Redmond as he was making his cut. He slipped as he got to about the 10-yard line. He'll set up another big third down. A third and six, and then we're going to go. You know that Fabrica, this is a two-down zone. They're inside the red zone. They have to get a touchdown. 3.30 to go. Redmond down five. And remember, Barry, they only have one timeout. They wasted two timeouts late in the third quarter, early in the fourth quarter, and we said earlier it may come down to using those timeouts, and that that may just call from the game if they need those timeouts. All right, here we go again with another big play. Russo the single back. Play action, Sharky rolling, looking, faking, dumping it off at the goal line. The catch is made at the one-yard line. It'll be shy of the touchdown. And guess who? McPherson once again on the catch. Harris there on the coverage. I tell you what, you can say what you want about these two young men, Sharky and uh, McPherson, but they're both winners. They've gone through taking a little bit of criticism from them, but they've come back very strong in this fourth quarter. Watch McPherson. He's on isolation on Harris. It's a down. It's an out. And watch this. He's coming back for the ball. And he, if he stays in, it's a touchdown. He comes back. The foot's out. Now it's goal and goal. Fourth and inches. They go for the touchdown. And the touchdown maker, Anthony Russo. Off the left side of the line, he slid and got the touchdown to put St. John's in front. 31-30 as Russo comes up with his first touchdown of the night. 46th of his career. He's the all-time leading touchdown maker here at St. John's. And the Redmen have stormed back to lead with uh, 2.38 to go, 31 to 30. And it's all in a pattern. This is what St. John's does. Every time we do one of their games, Ray, they wait till the last three, four minutes to play, and then they make it exciting. Well, they had picked up the first down on that play. It was first to go. Sharkey looking in the end zone. Throwing. It'll be picked up. They can run it back, as you know. And there's a flag on the play as the ball is returned upfield by number 57, Roger Hancock. And McPherson coming over to, uh, to save the touchdown right there. Or, can, you know, a two-point... And that could have been the difference in the game. The score is 31-30. Had he returned that for two points, Marty, it would have been 32-31. And there's also a flag on the play, and we're waiting for the call. Ineligible receiver downfield, St. John's. Point is no good. <laughs> We've had everything in this game, haven't we? We told you it would be an entertaining game. Thursday night football here at Redmond Field. St. John's looked like they were out of it. And they have come back to take the lead, 31 to 30 on this touchdown. Well, you only need one yard till you give it to Anthony Rizzo. He comes right off tackle, gets an excellent block, runs in untouched. 
give credit to that left side, Ferrara Campale, and also Toronto 33, the fullback gave him enough of a hit there to, to squirt to that left side. But still a lot of time left for Mr. McCord and company for Barris to come back. Well, we've had two exciting St. John's games here on Sports Channel. They won 29-28 as Sharkey threw a touchdown pass to Dan Parker in the closing minute. And Steve Diamikas put the extra point for the victory. Bob Ricca saying, come on, guys. we got a lot of time left. we got to be smart. They gave up a touchdown late in the first half of the closing minute. It's and not both, over. And both teams have played hard for the whole 60 minutes. But when you have nine turnovers, one team can come back as St. John's did and take advantage of them. Oh, that big fumble really cost Marist. This one will be fielded and brought back upfield by number 25, Robert Cole. And Colt snowed under as he got across the 30. Well, it'll be first and 10 with about two minutes and 31 seconds to go. And Brian McCourt checking into the ball game. He's got the play from Coach Jim Parity. Six plays, 30 yards, set up by the McCourt fumble of that snap. And Russo punching it in from one yard. 31-30 St. John's by one. Again, they've got to watch Diudo. He's a guy that can break one, as we saw him break one 65 yards earlier. Ryan McCourt, back to throw. Good protection. Looking for the sideline. He's got Phelan. Phelan will go out of bounds across midfield. It'll be a first down at the 49-yard line of St. John's. John Anitro ran him out. And the important thing there, it only took 11 seconds off the clock. Four catches for 98 yards by Phelan. He's also run for a touchdown of 27 yards. This game is not over, Marty, the way these two teams are moving the football here in the second half. And Maris has a place kicker with a very strong heart. We've seen it already, Chris Dettorio. First and ten at the St. John's 49. Ayuto in motion. The court there blitzing. Carew coming after him. He throws and Anitra closest to the ball. St. John's blitz two men. They blitz two linebackers, Carew and DeForest. And they forced McCourt to unload that one. Anitra, the other linebacker, was the guy who almost picked it off. But the big thing is McCourt threw the ball away. He avoided the sack, avoided the big loss. It's only second and ten. Go back, be patient. You have three downs to pick up ten yards. In case you missed it earlier, Kyle Carrero, their big fullback, injured first half. Ankle injury has not played since. McDonald's done a good job replacing him. Ayuto lines up as a wing to the right. On second and ten at the 49. McCord in trouble. He'll be pulled down by Ray Lambright. And Lambright just came up with a big play. Right there, he's beating the offensive line. He gets back to McCord. And Marist will use their first timeout. Barry Landers and Muddy Lions and Carl Werder back here at Redmond Field, a wild one. St. John's leading 31-30, Maris with third and 13. 2.05 to go here in the fourth quarter. McCourt 9 for 22, 222 yards. Rolling right, Lambert chasing, throws on the run, it's deflected out of bounds. It'll set up a fourth and 10. Well, 4th and 13, you had that sack by Lambright. This is the play. If Maris doesn't pick it up, the game is over. All they have to do is run the clock out. Biggest play of the game for the Maris Red Foxes. Remember, St. John's trying to break that three-game losing streak. We alluded, it, alluded to it at the top. Something these seniors wanted badly. They have never beaten Maris in their four-year career here at St. John's. And you got to give Bob Ricca a lot of credit. When Sharky was, he was shaking a little early. He stayed with his van. He says, hey, he's my senior. He's going to get me the victory. Here we go with fourth and 13. They're 0 for 1 in fourth down conversions. McCourt 
On the reverse. They turn it around on the outside. Going with the football is Gary Cassio, and he's down at the 49-yard line by Kevin Barberi and Mark Bernardini. Coming up quickly, number 28. Well, Bernardini comes all the way across the field to make that tackle. It worked one time, but not twice, and that should be the final play of Marist offense tonight. They still have two timeouts remaining, of course, to try to stop the clock, but the St. John's defense, which bent but didn't break, came up with a big play there. And the Redmen just a minute and 48 seconds away from another heart-stirring victory here at home. And what you do right now is you just give the ball to Anthony Russo or you fall on it, make them use their timeouts. But I think that uh, give it to Anthony Russo, let him pick up a first down here. And just as you call it, Coach, there's Russo going for maybe five, six yards inside midfield to the 45-yard line. And Russo picking up some big yardage on that carry. He's 147 yards and one touchdown, that go-ahead touchdown on the one-yard run. Clock stopped right now with a minute and 40 seconds. Sharkey on the